Hello, hello. Welcome to the Planet Zoo stream, the first one, in fact. <laughs> How's everyone doing? And I, I want to say before we kick off, Edward Bickford, you're at work and you're still gifted memberships before we've even started. That's just like absolutely insane. Your dedication and generosity are just There's insane. Thank you so, so much. And Claire, you've got a membership. Hope you enjoy that. And Crypto Leroy, hope you enjoy your membership as well. Um, how's everyone doing? How's everyone doing? Who have we got? We have got, well, Claire. Hello, Claire. Hope you're well. Edward, of course, as well. Get back to work. <laughs> uh, DJ, hello, Miss Waldo. Hello, Eggsy, Karina. Welcome in, guys. Hope you're doing well. Uh, Katie as well. Welcome. SK, hello. Egg, hello. Happy Wednesday, indeed. Ben as well. Welcome in. Welcome in, everyone. Literally just finished dinner. What perfect timing. Wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> Oh, that's good to hear, Ben. Yeah, I've just finished putting the kids to bed, so it's good timing for me. <laughs> Josh, hello, welcome in, welcome in. So, yeah, I just thought, like, because Consoles Edition's launching this week, and honestly, I'm absolutely obsessed with this game right now, I thought we'd have a little stream, because I keep playing it behind the scenes, in a different zoo, obviously, not in View Zoo and the Beginner's Guide, in, in my own zoo, and I just cannot get enough of it at the moment. I thought, you know what, I've got to, like, stop just playing it by myself, and that's a... Uh, Let's enjoy it all together, <laughs> all together. So yeah, if anyone does have any burning questions, um, I've never done a Q and A before, but I might actually like try it. So yeah, if you've got any any questions, say so, like want to know anything about Planet Zoo, how to do anything, anything like that. Uh, want to know? I'm, I, can't, I can't type now. I should have set this up before the stream, really about planet zoo let's do that and then you can stick it in the q a i think that's how it works <laughs> i don't really know i've got to keep flicking between the chat and the questions though so that'll be interesting and now my live chat's disappeared oh there we go there we go <laughs> it's back so let me know in the questions if you've got anything specific you want me to show you or talk you through or any questions you have let me know. Um, now's a good chance to do it all live if you are here. Um, yeah, so there we go. We want to see the other zoo. I can show you the other zoo at the end if you want, SK. Yeah. So there's, this is kind of two. Like, there was one that I was working on, and then I saw, like, I was looking around for inspiration, and I saw this, like, zoo entrance. I was like, oh my god, like, I want to build that. So I actually started another zoo a few days ago. <laughs> so, I mean, I can show you both if you want. The, the, they're very much, like, work in progress, and also what I do in my own time, so they're not polished. <laughs> but they're fun, they're fun. So we can go through those later. Yeah, we'll do that at the end. And um, for today, I just thought. Like there's, I'm actually going to pause the game because I do get some little lag issues <laughs> when it's like playing sometimes, particularly I'm a little bit nervous about streaming it, so we'll pause it. I was thinking we'd do something in this area here today. Um, so I was actually thinking we'll put in a small little exhibit hut and we can just go through some of the building techniques and things like that, like changing grid sizes and that sort of thing to get this in. So that's what we'll do. If there's any particular exhibit animals you want to see, then let me know. Oh, Overcharged Egg has a question. How do you plan the scope and growth of a zoo with such a daunting flat space before you? I think I think that's like probably the ultimate question, <laughs> really. It's um it's challenging. It's challenging. Like I think particularly when you come into a flat space zoo, I think having a topography zoo, like because you can select one of the blue blueprints now for, for topography, that's actually even more of a challenge because the topographies in those are crazy. So like as a beginner. It would be quite hard to manage. On a flat zoo, I think, like, I've obviously done few zoo. Let's just have a little look around. We'll answer the question. All of this is really on one level at the moment. Obviously, we've got things like Aquatica, which goes underneath. We've got various raised viewing platforms, like the Penguin platform and things around. And then this is starting to go up to another level at the back where we're going to have the main plaza here. But really, it is on, all on one level. And I would say, like, when you're starting off, don't be afraid to do that, which is why I've kind of done that with Puzu. It's the easiest way to manage paths, honestly. Helios, welcome in. Hello. Um... So yeah, but I, I would say don't be afraid to do that. I think how do you plan a zoo based on that flat topography? Uh, it's pretty hard. Like you would have seen if you've watched the series, My Little Paint Job Maps. And I always think that's kind of a good idea to envisage like, okay, at least the start of it. Like maybe you don't have to do the whole zoo. 
but like do you want transport near the start is are you going to have transport in the zoo full stop is it going to wrap the zoo is it going to just be around one little small part of it is it just going to be in one big enclosure like how do you want that to work that's a key thing because the transport is quite hard to fit in really later especially if you spend hours detailing up a habitat so i'd say that's where i'd start and then always an entrance you kind of you want to see the obvious things like shops gift shop i failed with the gift shop around our entrance <laughs> like some food and drink area that sort of thing and then leading on to some nice habitat i think the first one's always got to be like i said in the series an animal that isn't going to be super super popular um because you don't want crowds of people right by your entrance in terms of path networks always keep it organic and i kind of like I, I do think as much as i've planned out this zoo like you don't always have to plan a zoo so just kind of free form go for it and see where you get to that's what i'd say <laughs> let me just check if there's any other questions before we start building no hopefully that's sort of answering your question it's a it's a hard one to answer Egg. <laughs> it's a hard one to answer midnight moons hello you're trying to fix your pc or oh, no good luck i hope you get it fixed and emma welcome in long time they speak yes welcome in emma is an amazing planet zoo player as well uh, for anyone who doesn't know that i get overwhelmed when it comes to building anything my imagination sucks oh claire oh claire it's it's like it's it's practice <laughs> <laughs> it's practice um right let's start off with this i think like it's, it's i mean i, I could <laughs> i'm probably not going to because i don't want this stream to be super long as it's part of the beginner's guide here but we could go back and visit my first zoos which i still have one of them on here and it's absolutely god awful like creativity comes with time you've got to kind of experiment and get to know the zoo i think before you do anything else um so yeah, what we're going to do here is we're going to put in, in a little exhibit hut. And actually, I think this is on the... Yeah, it is on the grid of the zoo. So we can kind of do it at this angle and it'll make things a lot easier when we're moving things around. I'd say that's one thing with buildings is actually don't be afraid. So like if I click away from this, the first construction piece you put in, you could actually build it somewhere far away, somewhere else in your zoo. <laughs> Excuse me. And build it on the grid of the zoo. So I'm not rotating this at all here. So build it somewhere else and then you can select all of your pieces and move it in. It's sometimes a lot easier because when you're trying to add some of the smaller props, which don't snap to a grid, you're going to get nicer aligned placements more easily if you're just like building on the actual zoo grid. Obviously, if it's a square building, if you're doing something more clever, uh, you might have problems. <laughs> So yeah, we're going to fit this in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put two small exhibits. In fact, we want it this way. Two small exhibits into this area with a keeper hut in the back is what I'm thinking. And we're just going to do a plain small building. I'm putting them in all the wrong places. I'm going to follow around the inside of the habitats like this. In fact, actually, I think with the exhibits, we probably want these on the outside. Mm, maybe. Let's undo that. We'll see when it comes to it. <laughs> So let's just delete out these pieces that I've put on the wrong part of the grid. I always like to work kind of inside the grid when it comes to a building. I mean, not always, but mainly, mainly. Um, so yeah, let's go back into edit mode. I think how we're going to set this up is we're going to have two exhibits in here with space in between. So because we've got a four grid, what, oh no, please visit them. It would help me realise that everything needs to be perfect. Okay, we'll have a very brief... I mean, you literally, you can look at the top of it and see that it's, like, absolutely awful. So we could do that. I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely fine with that. Um, yeah, it does It does answer it. Okay, good. Uh, good. Um, so, yeah, so what I want is two exhibits in here. Like, if we go to facilities, so we're still within this group here. If we come into here, into animal exhibits, you'll see they're snapping to the, like, four wide part of our grid so let's come in here let's change this down to two and then we can start to snap in to different locations so like here that we couldn't snap into before so this is really where i want it i think we want one here and another one here so we've got a space in the middle and a space either side it's not equal but that's fine we can put some education boards and things in the middle so that'll help it look nice so let's just exit this group for a second because i definitely don't want the paths joined up like this so we're going to come into paths and we're just going to delete those and I hope it doesn't delete any of our existing paths, which it hasn't. Have we deleted this one? Okay, that one's not okay. That one has gone. Wonderful. There we go. So yeah, I can actually see they are sticking through our walls a little bit. So yeah, we do want to move these one step forward. So you can either hit M on your keyboard to move them and we'll just do them outside the grid in front of our exhibits like that, which is fine. So I'm going to do kind of a mixture of different textures, I think, for this building to make it a bit interesting. 
Oh, building on the world grid is so much easier. Yeah, exactly, Emma. It's a tip I haven't actually mentioned <laughs> in here, but it really, really is. Yeah, just move it in. Just move it into wherever you want after you've built it on the world grid. Very, very much easier. Uh, Lily, hello, welcome in. Love your builds. Keep up the great work and fab design. Thank you, Lily. Thank you. That's very kind. Um, right, so yeah, yeah, so what I'm going to do is kind of combine this with a bit of wooden wall i think so i think we're going to go for the stained wood i kind of have an idea in mind because i didn't want to come into a stream and um start like spending hours choosing what materials i'm going to use so i have an idea in mind for this so i think we're going to use stained wood for this but i want to change the color so we're going to come into here and i'm thinking something more browny so let's use that as a base and then we can come into the color wheel and i want it to look a little bit weathered so i'm going to go down more towards the gray scale bit yeah, something like that might be quite nice. We could try and even go a little bit greyer. A little bit more sun bleached, as it were. Yeah, I quite like that. <clears throat> so, my voice is going already. So <laughs> I've had a long day. So, yeah, we're going to place these in. What I do want is I want the roof just sloping up from one side up to the front. And then we'll probably put an awning out the front where we put our path in here, I think. We could go a little bit closer to the train tracks as well, so we can do that once we've built the building. Um, I'm just going to have a little hydration break to clear my throat. <laughs> I always forget about it and then curse myself. Yeah, I do as well. Like Particularly in Fuzu, I really haven't paid attention to it because I've been so like, let's do it in this space. That actually is like the best building tip there is. Build on the world grid. <laughs> really, really helps. Um, I'm thinking in terms of overlapping... We probably, so we can put this in the middle here. See, our grid has gone back to four wide. That's fine. Let's just change it back down to two. Then we should be able to snap this nicely into the middle there, which we can, yes. Um, I I think, do we want that? I think we want two metres up above here. So that's only going to give us one, which is okay. I think we can deal with that. I'm just wondering if we use these four world wides all the way around or, yeah, let's do, let's do it properly. Let's do it properly. We'll use two. And then we're going to add one to it because that will give us four with the one wide stone wall at the bottom, which is what we're going to want to cover up those exhibits. So we use a two high wall there and then we're going to grab the one high wall and just holding shift on our keyboard, raising it up to the top. Like this, go all the way around. Oh, that's not in the right place. That's fine. We can move that. Let's put that one down. <clears throat> And then we'll click M and get that back into position. Wonderful. And I think actually with the one high, that's going to cover up the top, isn't it? So we could actually even go, I'm thinking it's too high too much. So if we bring it down to there, are we covering up too much of the exhibit? I quite like that actually. It's sort of a smaller window, isn't it? So I think we could do that. Yeah. Let's do it. So now here we've got awkward spaces. So what we do want to add in here is a wall panel. So the stained wood is really good because it comes with the panel pieces. Not all of them do. So that can be a little bit annoying. So I'd say when you're picking what kind of construction materials you're using, check if they've got panels. Most of them do, um, but there's a few that don't. Uh, so it can make it tricky if you're trying to do a sort of more interesting design like that. The amount of times my voice cracked today like a teenage boy while I was mid-teaching was embarrassing. Oh no, Emma. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a long couple of weeks. <laughs> so, so my voice is a little bit tired and I've done a bit of recording today as well. So we're already um, <laughs> we're already using it, the vocal cords. Yeah, it can be embarrassing, can't it, Emma? But <laughs> at least I'm not doing it in front of teenage boys. Well, there might be teenage boys watching. Well, it's fine if there is, but I can't see you. So it's all good. <laughs> I finally started to go last night while talking to my daughter who says hello hello Claire's daughter hello hello I I hope you're enjoying a bit of zoo <laughs> so yeah with these panel pieces as well these ones actually for this theme aren't exactly the um the same width as the wall pieces they're sort of half the width so we can just actually using the x function here I kind of haven't explained what I just did there we're going to move it back like this so what I did is I got the panel piece, aligned it to the surface so that we know we're snapping in perfectly to the surface. Frankly, because we're on the world grid, it wouldn't really matter. You could do it from here, click X and then move it into place. 
Shannon, hello, welcome in. Hello, I'm new here. I've just bought Planet Zoo on the console, but using keyboard and mouse for easiness. What is the quick key to quick quickly tilt rocks to make a wee bridge on the habitat? Oh, nice. Um, so, okay, let's go and uh, have a little look. So uh, you mean like to make a, a bridge with rocks? I'm trying to think, oh, I made one actually, I think in the first, in the first habitat, this one here. So with this, what I would do, Let's uh let's come to an empty space <laughs> between the trees. Uh let's grab our rock. Um let's it doesn't matter, does it? Let's take let's take the rock cladding cl cladding this one. So if we do this, if I click X now, it's so it's flat at the moment, it's just like on the ground like this. What you probably want to do is turn angle snap off, but you can press tick and then if you do the arrow across and then press X again that's going to like tilt it like this and then you can move it up but you could turn angle snap off to get a finer tilt to it if you want so then you can just like keep going like this and then because we've got angle snap on actually it does make it a bit easier we can tilt it down like this so it's flat in the middle pressing tick all the time move it across here press tick and then you can start to tilt it down so hit x again on your keyboard to get the like rotation axes is it and then we can go down like this is that what you meant, Shannon? Hopefully that answers your question. Um, I wouldn't say there's a hotkey, but yeah, X is the one that you want. So when, whenever you place anything in, if you click X, then you get these axes to kind of more precisely move it around. Edward, <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing, Edward? Ben, it's gifted a membership by Edward Bickford. Thank you so much, Edward. That's like, that's, that's the third one. Thank you so much. That's really generous. It's really generous. <laughs> I would say get back to work, but you can do whatever you want. <laughs> um, thank you, Edward. Really appreciate it. Ben, I hope you enjoy the membership. I once had my voice cracked during a social marketing presentation in front of 75 people. Worst moment of my life. Oh, no, Meg. <laughs> Honestly, I'm immune to it now. There's very little I can do or say that that phases me. Uh, yeah, that's just it, Emma. You must become pretty resilient being a teacher, I'd say. <laughs> Definitely. Right. I, I can't imagine. I think that would be my worst nightmare. As much as I can talk to, like I've had a few hundred people on a live stream um, once upon a time. Um, and that was far less scary than having five people in a room and talking to them directly. Like, because I can hide behind my screen, even though my face is on camera, but I can hide to a certain point. I can't see all your like grimaces when I do something terrible. So, <laughs> well, that answered it, Shannon. Great, great, good. Let me just check the questions. No. So yeah, let me know. Throw the questions into the Q&A if you have anything specific or just into the live chat as well. So yeah, you can let me know there. Okay, so that's our panel pieces in here. Did I click tick? Let's, let's do it just in case. Um, what I'm going to do, I've got both of those selected. If you haven't got them selected, then just click on one, hold control on your keyboard, click on the other. I'm now going to do control X or you can press this button up here, the duplicate and advanced move. So we're going to click control X and then we're going to move it all the way to the other end. And then before we click tick, we're just going to make sure that it's really like precisely in place. I think it's a tiny bit too high, but that's OK. I can see it's slightly above the wooden boards here, but oh, it's because it's slightly in front, actually. Let's just like be really super precise about it. There we go. That's better. That's better. So we'll click tick on that, we'll press X, and then actually I am going to go back and fix these two. So I just clicked on one, press control on the keyboard, and then we're going to hit X now, or you can press this button. So X is going to move these pieces without duplicating them. And then we can just try and be a little bit more precise about this. Like that. There we go. Okay, so we've got the front wall set up. What we do want to do now is make sure we can get a roof in. But I'd quite like to put a keeper hut, I think, into the back here because our bison enclosure, the staff pass here, and there isn't really a keeper hut very close at all, actually. I think they have to go back to the main staff area, which we need to come in and do as well. So we may well do those on some more live streams if you guys enjoy this. Like, as well, if you're watching the vlog back, please let me know in the comment if you'd like to see some more live streams. Um... Yeah, on Planet Zoo. Let me know. Liam, welcome in. Vanilla Skylines, welcome in. Hello, hope you're doing well, both of you. Has anyone played Planet Zoo on PS5? Is it good? Is it similar to PC? So I admittedly have not played it. I don't have a PS5, unfortunately. I've only got an Xbox One, so I'm a bit out of touch when it comes to console. Um, we're just going to change the grid here so that we can get this back snapping on top of our wall here. And then we're going to move it over. Press Shift to raise it up. 
like that. Um, I have heard it's very good though. I was reading some reviews on Reddit to say that it was really good. Um, the performance is a lot better than the Planet Coaster version um, on PS5 uh, and, and, and Xbox One as well. So people seem to be really enjoying it. From what I've seen from various different videos, it's really not too different to the PC version, except for having slightly more constraints on like the number, the complexity meter as they call it, which is the number of pieces you can put into your zoo. Um, so I think, yeah, that's, um, I, 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 it's looking good. I'd love to actually play it myself to give it a try. And and as Shannon was saying, you can play it with mouse and keyboard. So really the experience shouldn't be that different to being on a PC actually, and particularly if you've got mouse and keyboard. I think on a controller, it must be a little bit harder. <laughs> um, so now we've got this end wall piece in here. I'm just gonna duplicate it by clicking this button or we can do control D on the keyboard. And we're gonna move it over here. Now, annoyingly, that is not on our grid. Uh, let's exit the group. Let's come back in. We'll select all of these three pieces again. Yeah, we're not actually on the same the same grid frame here, which is interesting. Okay, let's duplicate that. Yeah, we can't get them. <laughs> That's really annoying. <laughs> right, I'm going to exit here. Okay, if we click on these, yeah, our grid pattern has changed here. <laughs> our grid pattern has changed, which can happen. <laughs> that just, yeah, is what it is. Really annoyingly. Okay, let's duplicate uh, this. Yeah, we can't do it. Okay, let's um, let's come back to here. We'll select all of these three. We're going to duplicate them. If you come up with something like this, which is really irritating, <laughs> place them in here. We're going to exit and then what we're going to do actually i'm kind of glad this has come up because these problems do happen and uh, if there's an easy fix like please <laughs> so we'll tell me in chat if anyone knows uh deep meaningful sayings hello welcome in have you stopped playing city skylines no i have not no absolutely not it's just um planet zoo console edition has launched this week um uh i've been very into it in my off time like i'm really just really enjoying zoo at the moment which is why there's more content and i've been incredibly busy at work which is why there's been a lack of city skylines content but Solitude is already in the works and will be out either tomorrow or Friday. Um, so I'm very much not stopped City Skylines. It's just had a little hiatus because mainly because my work was super busy. Um, Few, can you hide those utilities just up from the path in this Habitat Build 2? Yes, we can, Ben. <laughs> yes, we can. And we are definitely going to do that. Yeah, because they're nasty. We don't like those. Um, yes to more live streams, as Claire. Yes. <laughs> yes, more live streams on Planet Zoo sounds amazing. Yes, Katie. Okay, good. Good. More more Planet Zoo live streams, yes please, as DJ. Okay, all right. That's 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 positive in the chat. Gregory Deckelman, hello, welcome in. I am very well, thank you. And that would be the moment I'd switch to a different game on name as well, though. <laughs> I still can't fix my PC and sadly it made me miss some of the stream. Oh no, Midnight Moons. It's all right. We're, we're just casual building and you can catch up on the stream anytime. Do I recommend City Skylines? I absolutely do. Uh, I 100%, 150%, even though that's not a thing, recommend City Skylines 1. Absolutely, because it's freaking amazing. Particularly if you've got a PC and you can add even just a couple of mods is really going to like enhance your experience. But even the vanilla gameplay actually is really, really good. Cities 2, I think I'll be able to recommend it in maybe a year or two's time. Like right now, I honestly think City Skylines 1 is the better game. Um, uh, the Cities 2 still has some issues. And for me, it just doesn't have the draw that Cities 1 had. Um, so, yeah, just coming back to this, what I did is clicked on these pieces. I, I, sorry, I kind of missed that. I clicked on it without saying. If you click on a piece like this, you can say split from group. So that's what I've done for these. So they're now on their own grid. And then from this, if we exit the group, we've got these three selected. So we're not in editing group mode, which is what you do to get to this button. Then we can click X or this button here, and then we can just eyeball them into place. So it's a bit of an annoying workaround, but it works. And that's how you can get it back on your grid. <laughs> um, and I've not really been gaming much recently. I've been crafting and writing a whole lot more. That's nice, Emma. That's nice. Are you writing anything in particular? But I'm about to start a two-week break from work and I'm home for half of it. So lots of gaming time. Yes. Yay. Back, back to gaming, Emma. That's good. Love CS1, not played much CS2, Claire says. Yeah, exactly. Have you ever played House Flipper 2? I have Midnight Moods. I am. Um, I, so I got it a little while ago uh not that long a couple of months maybe absolutely obsessed so good love it absolutely love it we could do some house flipper content if i could ever find the time 
<laughs> we can definitely do that. Right, coming on to this, just before we get too far in this, I want to make sure we've got a keeper hut in the back here. And to Ben's point, let's move these inside our little building, I think would be a wonderful thing to do. So, yeah, we're going to come into staff facilities to keep a hut. We'll just grab our small one. And then if we, when you're hovering around, like sometimes it won't always say it, like it doesn't say it here. What you want to make sure is that you've got that select group, group <laughs> 539 to add to. So we're going to click that now and it's going to be in the group. So you'll see this editing group come up here and that's what you want. And then what we can do is place this in. So I definitely want it right at the edge, I think which is not going to let us, is it? Oh, there it is. And that is the door facing that way. Yeah, so we can have the door facing out the side here. In fact, actually, let's have the door facing out the back. Yeah, like this. So we'll add that in here. Then we're going to exit group. And then what I'm going to do is pick these up. So this one, I'm going to say split from group. So that's now free form. And then we're going to move it. But we need to edit this group now. And then again, select into this group here. So click here. I'm going to turn it round because these facilities are wonderful for the little like control panel. So the, the, the water and the electricity, the control panel just sticks through the wall, which is super cool. Again, we've defaulted back to our full wide grid, which is in the wrong place. <laughs> so we're going to, I think it's probably because we've got the exhibits in the two meter grid, as it were. So we're going to snap this into here next to this. And you don't need to worry about those wall pieces. In fact, all wall pieces, the keeper can walk into this hut just like that straight through the wall <laughs> and guests can also do that as well so like bear that in mind with your detailing is it is possible to just leave a wall there you don't need to put in a door but that's fully accessible like that so let's exit that group we'll pick this one up um we'll say select group in fact let's move this uh oh no we need no we need to select group let's go into edit group mode then if we click on this we should be able to move it then exit the group yes and now we can select to add it to this group here so let's again let's change our grid back down to two meters and we'll flip it around make sure we've got that control panel against the wall because that's the front of the building and then those are all in all part of our group so if i exit that now you'll see all of these pieces are highlighted and in fact we can click those together uh well we can't because they're very slightly off the grid annoyingly but we you can sometimes merge scenery into one group which is useful as well <clears throat> finesse hello welcome in hey if you i'm new to your channel and i've been really enjoying your videos binge watching your videos for the last couple of days oh thank you all right well i'm glad you're enjoying them welcome to the channel welcome to the stream as well <laughs> thank you I've just finished writing about something, so I'm taking a bit of a break. But crafting-wise, I'm working on a temperature blanket and a cardigan. I just started a lavender field cross-stitch piece. That sounds wonderful, Emma. I love that. I love that. Uh, Midnight Moons, would you recommend? I can only get one House Flipper 2, City Skylines, or the Jurassic Park game, Prehistoric Kingdom. Yes, yeah, that's what it's called. Oh, Jurassic World Evolution. Oh, yeah, Jurassic World Evolution. The one for Frontier. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, I haven't played Jurassic World so I honestly can't give you an opinion on that. Out of House Flipper 2 and City Skylines, I think you probably get more value from City Skylines. Um, House Flipper 2, the actual kind of career mode on it isn't massive. The sandbox mode is good, but sort of like, it, I wouldn't say it's kind of, the replayability of it is far, far less than City Skylines. Like, yeah, but you're talking to someone who's got 3,000 hours in City Skyline, so like, yeah, I love it. But it's definitely, I think, the replayability and the kind of long-term value for money, I think you'll get more from City Skylines right now. Yeah. And don't forget, you can pick these all up on Instant Gaming, which is in the description below for big discounts, which does help support me as well. So, um, yeah, don't forget to check that out, because if Steam doesn't have a sale on, you can make some really big savings from that. Um. Okay, so there we go. We've got kind of the the basis of our little hut here i'm actually going to move it all over so what i am going to do is select this little extra piece that's now not part of our group here and we're going to go to advanced move settings we could go to move that's fine as well but i kind of like advanced move because then i know it stays on the ground if we've done some terraforming sometimes you can get some slight lift off the ground and then it's awkward to get your paths in so yeah we're going to do this the paths are going to automatically come back in of course they are but <laughs> that is what it is so i'm going to move this right over because i want to make sure i can fit in the staff path behind so that feels pretty good for me um 
could we move it back even further i'm just wanting to make sure that we've got actually let's move it a tiny bit over here because i want to make sure we've got enough room to add a path into this grid which i think we can i think that's okay there we could potentially move this back just a tiny touch like that okay let's click tick there and then what i'm going to do with the path is i'm going to try and get the horrendously in fact actually let's not do a staff path let's do like a nice like dirt path or sand path that's going to link all of these up okay so we've put the path in like this i have got angle snap on we want to make sure we're joining up to the electricity one here so i'm just going to do a circle for now with angle snap on if you kind of hover your mouse around this end yeah you should get a snap point like that which means it's going straight on so then we can connect up into this path if we click control yeah we can go one step further and then we can hook it into our keeper hut as well so control stops it from snapping onto nearby paths so that's a useful pop key as well and then again we're just going to hover over here till we get that snap point click there and then we can join the path into the main path here so the, all of those buildings are now connected and into that path and then out here <laughs> we want to delete these because i don't want the path in like that we haven't got the connection there we do want to delete that bit as well uh, so that'll do for the moment and i'd say we could probably get the path in now before we start doing a bit more detailing on the front of our building oh karina's just put the Insta gaming link in the chat thank you karina appreciate it I'll make sure to send a picture of the blanket in discord yes please do Emma. yes i'd love to see that i presume those utilities will still serve the bison habitat having moved them that's a very good point to check <laughs> i would have thought so because they're oh no yeah <laughs> no they do not they do not so apparently we can't have the water here uh because that's not going to reach this section of water because it is a separate body so that section of water is going to become dirty now ben great great shout uh power wise we should be fine yeah because we've got another power over here so there's nothing at the back here that needs powering so that's okay water wise mm -hmm. we're gonna have to add in another one i'm wondering if maybe we have one over here somewhere because um let's go back to power and water let's yeah the water menu here could we have something right at the back here that could possibly reach it because then that's going to extend and be more useful for other habitats over this side yeah it would and we're probably wasting money as well by leaving that other one in but i'm going to do it for now rather than faffing around with changing paths <laughs> so yeah all with, with the water things all you have to do is have some of that coverage touching part of uh let's put this down let's go back to the heat map yeah part of the water it doesn't need to be over the whole thing so like the lake and the rivers here we've got a water um is that the temperature the water treatment one yeah no that's it um which keeps your water clean it's just touching part of the lake which means the entire lake and the entire river will be clean so you don't need to cover the entire body of water with those great shout burn great shout our bison would have been drinking dirty water <laughs> if you hadn't have said that do you have a good idea of how cities work for city skylines um yeah <laughs> i would say so um if, you, if you're just starting out on it you can watch my funilla county series which is a vanilla series um it's it's pretty beginner friendly i would say i try and explain a lot of stuff but it's not kind of designed as a beginner guide but if you've got any questions you can always join the discord and ask that or drop drop comments and i try to do my best to try and answer as many as i can so yeah uh use my link to buy panel zero and a few packs about a month ago i think oh thank you appreciate that <laughs> it dawns on me after i said to me they might not oh yeah so it's your fault man i don't know <laughs> so um yeah yeah <laughs> they didn't work but we fixed it it's all good it's all good um okay right coming back to here let's get a roof on and then we can start working on some decorations around the front and the path out the front as well in fact let's do the path out the front for now um so what i want to do is i want to have a nice straight path out the front with a connection in here and probably kind of extending onto the path this way i think to connect in there so what we're going to do is we're actually going to go straight in so i haven't got a path down we're going to go straight into a line grid 
and we're going to say, oh, wonderful, look, it's selecting the grid I want. <laughs> we're going to hover over building pieces. So you can hover over any building piece or path to align to a grid. It doesn't have to be a path, which again is something I haven't actually said in the series. So hopefully that's useful to some people. Um, so yeah, we're going to align the path to the grid of this building. And then you'll see it kind of, we can plop the path down in nicely within the grid. Um, what path do we want actually? Should we go for something a little bit different? Let's go for a block path in here. I think that'll be quite nice. Yes, yeah, so we're just going to extend that out. We'll go like this because I want this to go straight out this way. So we've got this nicely aligned at the front here. Now we can deselect that grid. Now the interesting thing is with exhibits, you actually don't have to connect the path in. So this will work fine. It's like a habitat. The guests just need to be in viewing distance of it. So don't worry about connecting the path in at all there. Um, so down the centre, let's click here and we'll join the path in there. So we'll click again and then out this side again. We've got angle snap on here because I want to come straight out and into our main path like that. And then we can create some nice entrance and exits around that way like so. OK, so let's get the roof on. Um, I don't know what kind of roof we want to go for, actually. I'm thinking possibly Arctic because I really like the kind of wood element to it. But let's have a little look at what other pitched roofs we have. Um, if you kind of like don't want to filter through all of them, you can just say one metre. <laughs> and then that sort of helps narrow the list down a little bit, which is always handy. Um, so I do occasionally do that if I remember to. I've got a metal cloud roof, might be might be quite nice. It's also worth bearing in mind like the underside of it as well. So this doesn't have any kind of beams or anything like that. The Arctic one does, so it looks a little bit more wooden hut-like, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Um, join the Discord. Oh, thank you. Welcome, Franklin. Hello. Sorry for being late. Don't need to apologise, Franklin. Glad that you're here. Good to see you here. Are you adding anything behind the tree line? Maybe you could do that and link the water thing behind the two. Um, so I probably won't. This will probably be the kind of back end of the path, but we're definitely going to be doing habitats around this side, which will probably extend back a little bit. It may, it may go behind the tree line. Um, but I think that's probably going to be a kind of park border there, essentially. But we'll see. Yeah, it could be hidden away behind there. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, going back to the roofs, like the plastic one, again, this has like metal beams on it. So when you're inside a building, if you look up, if you talk about like real small little details, if you care about these things, all these roofs have different sort of <laughs> experiences, shall we say, when you look underneath them. Like, I really like this one because of that. Like the wooden beams on it are, are really nice again. So we could use this. I think we might use the Arctic, which I know is slightly odd theming, but I do quite enjoy it. Slate roof. See, again, this doesn't have the sort of wooden beams on it, which is really what I want here. I want that kind of slightly more rustic look. Vertical wooden plank roof could be quite nice, but again, no wooden beams. So it looks a little bit more modern and... Um, less wooden hut like. That's, that's really what I'm going for here. So I think we're going to go for Arctic. I think we'll do that. Uh, with city skylines you have to custom build anything it's all preset buildings it's all preset buildings but like the beauty of it is like in terms of my games game style at least is like customizing all the areas around the buildings <laughs> that's where the fun comes out for me um so you can build if you get some of the dlcs you can build like your own custom parks your own custom kind of industry areas that sort of thing like prop detailing like you can get right down and, and detail some really cool plazas and that sort of thing so it yeah becomes uh very enjoyable for me uh, that way. <laughs> um, okay, so roof wise, yeah, I want it to stick over a little bit, but I think for now we're going to stick to the main grid that we've got. So let's lower that back to, down to two. Let's go up to the front to start off with. We'll come up to here. We'll drop one in. So if I hold shift, we'll drop it in behind and we can just kind of keep going across the whole building. So there's no overlap for the time being, which is okay. We'll drop this down, fill in all of those gaps like that. And you can see it looks ridiculously ugly <laughs> on the front, all the way around. It just like roofs that border are, yeah, not great. <laughs> not great. At the back here, we can solve this though with a bit of trim. So again, if we go for the Arctic one metre roof trim, hold shift on our keyboard to make it go up and down. Height snap really useful for this as well. Always snapping into that one metre. If you go down to here, you get slightly more snapping options that gives you a bit more intricacy and then right down you wouldn't have any snapping so it can be a little bit more difficult to align if you go that far um so let's just add this in like this now what i want is i want an overhang on either side and at the front but i don't want to be putting in 
an entire piece like this again. So you see again with the snapping, it's not going in line with where we want here. So we're going to have to lower this and just bring it down a tiny touch. So yeah, I feel like that's a little bit too far for what I want. I kind of want it a little bit less than that. So what I'm going to do is place this in like so. I'm then going to click on it, go split from group like that. And then we're going to click X on our keyboard or the advanced move rotate button there. And then what we can do is shift it back just a little bit. So I'm thinking like even an overhang just like that would be fine. And then we can bring it back down to reef height. Now, sometimes you'll get some of this kind of glitchy flashingness. That's somewhat unavoidable, but you can avoid it slightly if you just lower it a tiny, tiny bit, which gives you like a little bit like it's not perfectly aligned here, but it doesn't give you all this kind of flashing craziness on the roof, which can sometimes be really helpful. So even here, I think we might be all right with that tiny little gap. So we'll see how that goes. So let's place that in. If we then click on it and go to enter group edit mode, like this we're then on the grid of this piece here so we can then really oops we can then with the piece that we want let's press z to rotate it and then we can really easily snap it into the grid like that so there we go we've got our overhang at the front there um so that's yeah helpful let me just check claire what's your favorite part of the zoo so far or from your other zoo um that's a good question that's a great question actually i think my favorite part from this zoo is actually the sloth house <laughs> so we can go and take a little look at it here um yeah i love this bit let's press play and hope that we don't get any dropped frames <laughs> glitchiness i just absolutely love this like i really like this glass kind of curvy building i really like how the sloths like just yeah integrated like extended the habitat out over here to make it feel a little bit bigger a little bit grander i love the steam all around it um this reminds me of a zoo that i take my kids to where there's a sloth exhibit um and uh yeah <laughs> i really like it like this yeah i think this is probably my favorite building i think it's just quite unique and and, and nice the kind of random shape of it so yeah i think that's probably my favorite one um in this zoo at least i'd say i've probably got some better ones maybe in other zoos <laughs> uh, yeah i don't know it depends it kind of depends i think what you're if you're looking at a building if you're looking at a habitat i also really like mandrel falls in fuso as well so that's probably my other favorite um it just came on sale on xbox the price is too much for me unless it goes to game pass in the future i thought it was going to game pass actually but i may have misread that somewhere yeah didn't know it was not necessary to connect exhibits to the path thought it was needed for keepers oh actually is it needed for keepers you might be right you might be right i don't think it is though i'm going to experiment here let's actually um, <laughs> let's have a live experiment i've done it before and not had issues but now i'm thinking to myself maybe it was in sandboxes <laughs> like they wouldn't have any issues anyway um yeah that's a good point let's experiment let's get some um let's get some animals in in fact, we could actually, we could get some beetles. Should we do a beetle hut? Just thinking what, what animals we have. I know there's more than two types of beetles. Yeah, let's do beetles. Let's just do that. And then we'll save time. Doesn't really matter, does it? It's just a bit, they generally look the same. Now I can't spell beetle. <laughs> Goliath beetle. Right, okay. Uh, let's just check on Zoopedia. One to eight. Okay, that's fine. Um she's pretty decent let's get her oh his longevity isn't great we'll get him as well okay we've got one 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 male one female she's not too bad that's probably the better one okay that's three females oh a silver we'll get her as well okay that's four females we can't have any more oh no there's a bronze one all right let's get <laughs> another one we can get rid of the old oh actually <laughs> yeah i might need to here we go goliath beetles which was the we had one fairly rubbish yeah her longevity isn't good let's get rid of her so let's quick trade her out and then we have got four females one male so we need some more males yeah, let's get that one yeah, this is the thing about like franchise. I've kind of stopped playing on franchise because I can never get the animals I want. Um, I'm very much sandbox player <laughs> in my free time. 
definitely. So that's the kind of beauty of playing on Sandbox here. Even though all the settings are in line with Franchise, so we have to keep the animals nice. Um, yeah, these aren't great, are they? Uh, yeah, I very much I, I, I like Sandbox. <laughs> but the process of buying the animals here isn't always great when you've only got four um, to choose from. Okay, so how many males have we got? We've got one, two, three, four, five, so I can get rid of one. There was one that really wasn't very good, was there? Yeah, this one, you can go. Quick trade out. Um, okay, let's just filter on... How have we got so many? These aren't all in our stored animals, are they? No, yeah, okay. That's interesting. I've never noticed that before. Uh, yeah, I've never noticed that all the species are available on your stored animals. I thought it was only the ones that you had. Um, very interesting. Right, let's go to Goliath Beetle. That's what we want. We'll select all of those. That should be eight. Yes. Send to do. Let's send them in here. Oh, look at that. <laughs> we can see straight through to the keeper. How is that? Wonderful. Okay, let's just set this up quickly. So we want to close. That's one, two, three. Yeah, we'll close all those. Oh, we've already got three duplicates for the wonderful let's shut those uh we won't have any layouts so we haven't got any research on let's check the temperature kind of like to put them sort of roughly in the middle of these so yeah i mean that's fine that's fine what we do want to do though not heat map is get our vet onto the research here i think they're still researching the bison yeah <laughs> So we could, let's move her, yeah, let's move her onto Goliath Beetle because otherwise they won't be happy because they've got zero enrichment in there. Um, and then let's very, very quickly find another beetle to add into here. Uh, we'll go for the Titan Beetle. And let's check Superpedia for this, one to seven. Well, let's just, let's just get a couple. Doesn't matter to that. That will do, that will do. Let's refresh the list. Oh, gold female. Oh, 30. Oh, we're fine on conservation credits now because the penguins are making us loads. <laughs> we're going to get the silver one as well. Oh, no, there's another silver. Um, the the choices are hard. It'll do. Right, what have we got? Well, that was uh, What was this? Titan beetle, wasn't it? Uh, let's go to Titan beetle. We've got three females, two males. That's fine. Let's do that. Center zoo. Let's get them in there. Uh, okay, and then we can experiment with the keeper in just a second. So we'll add in our facades. I also do want to make sure that I've done the management before I forget as well. So actually, let's come in here and we'll go to manage population. We'll have three. Three, that's fine. Um, I think this is all fine. Layout's good. Yes, okay. Let's check the management on these as well. So if you haven't seen this, go to my exhibits episode. And that'll explain the management side of it. Um, but basically what it does is if exhibit animals have baby, they autom babies, they automatically go into your exhibit trading. Um, so we can clear the filters here. You can see we've got absolutely tons of them in here. Um, we can't release to the wild a few of them, any ones with these exclamation points on them. Yeah, so if we get all of those, we'll get 85 conservation credits. From that but it's kind of handy to stop overpopulation which is kind of sometimes with certain exhibit animals a massive issue when they just constantly make babies <laughs> they just love their little exhibits so much um let's also get a keeper just to look after these i probably need to go through and kind of do a bit of keeper management and staff management at some point and we'll create a work zone as well uh, we need a staff room. Let's go back to the main entrance one. Yes. Okay. Uh, oh, we didn't give it a name. <laughs> um, let's say... Oh, entrance exhibits. They're quite close, aren't they? Let's call it that. And then we can go to unassigned staff. We should only have one vendor... Uh, not vendor keeper yeah that's unassigned so then we can put him onto entrance exhibits and we should be sorted so let's kick play for a little bit and we'll see how that does <laughs> great question great question the sloth house looks amazing thank you claire the sloths are one of my fave bills i also really like the prairie dogs yeah the prairie dogs are really cute i like that one as well yeah 
Go for Beatles, we can have a rock band. Love it. Rock band, yes, yes, we can. That's the names of the Beatles sorted. That's true, actually. Yeah, we should do some naming. <laughs> oh, Peter, I lost a prairie dog. Can you make him a plaque somewhere in the zoo? Don't we have that? I might have to press pause while I move around. I'd, yeah, I'm just very conscious of the stream lagging out. Um, I feel like one of these is for Ilos. Mary the Prairie. Yeah, Ilos, there you go. <laughs> Mary the Prairie, that was very sad. That was the first animal to, to die in the zoo. Oh, year 21. What year? 113. <laughs> that was a long time ago. When did Ilos die? Year 29, yeah. Oh. Very sad, very sad. So yeah, Ilos does have a plaque in the zoo. <laughs> there is a slight gap by the exhibit, it's really annoying. Yes, we're gonna fill that out, we're gonna fill that out. Right, let's uh, let's do it. Yeah, so with the, with the, oh sorry, I was gonna focus on the roof first and then we'll come on to detailing out the front of it. So with the roof, yeah, I want overhangs either side. So what we're gonna do is double click on a roof piece here. I'm gonna go to all of our roof pieces, if I can pick them up like this oh that's part of, that's part of a different one right and i come <laughs> into all of these select all of them split selection from group like that and then this one we're going to split the group i think oh we probably should have split this group first split all groups yes so all of these pieces are split so now we can add these to it as well and then from here we can then click x on our keyboards or this button here and we can move the entire roof over very very slightly to one side so i'm thinking just a simple overhang like that just looks an awful lot better so we'll go for that there we'll click tick and then all of these pieces are already separated so we can come in and click those and then we cannot click Control x <laughs> we should be able to on those no we can't right so in here what we do instead is we come into can we go into it? I can't even do it on each piece. That's very frustrating. Right, so we can control X on each piece and then just eyeball it over, which is kind of a long, like a very long way around. I'm sure there's a quick way around to that, but it is what it is. I want to try and get rid of some of that kind of glitchy, ugh, awful glitchiness. <laughs> yeah, it looks very, very bad when that happens, and it kind of is annoying, but it's a little bit unavoidable like i said if we just lower that down slightly it should stop um so let's grab this one <laughs> i'm sure there's a quicker way around to this it must be we'll just move this into place drop it down ever so slightly there we go click tick and then we'll just keep doing this over and over and over <laughs> until we're in place So yeah, it does give this kind of annoying lion on the reef, but I find that's actually visually a little bit less annoying than the constant flickering. So um, here we could actually just snap this. So if we come into this piece here, if we go to enter group edit mode, we can then come back in and get our one meter eve and we'll be able to snap it onto the end without issue like that. So it's exactly the same height. So there we go. We have got the reef in. I probably could have raised these up a little bit more here because that's <laughs> quite a large little gap, but there we go. <laughs> They're just dust by now. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Uh, do you need to have three Nile monitors or can you have two? No, you can just have two. Yeah, you don't have to. So when you look at the Zoopedia, um, if we go to Nile monitor, uh, which is a good example it's one to three so you could just have one nile monitor if you want but you cannot have more than three without them getting unhappy that's adults obviously babies doesn't matter you can have as many babies as you want so you can only have one male and two females or you could have two males by themselves or you could have three females by themselves um so that's the stipulations yeah it's one two three so you don't have to have yeah you don't have to have only uh, you don't have to have three you don't have to have the maximum for example with the beavers you do have to have at least two <laughs> so that's slightly different um so you'll notice that on different animals that those requirements are the same but anything within those boundaries you're absolutely fine um 
okay right yeah these little gaps i know that's incredibly annoying <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to detail up the front of this now so we're going to use just some beams and things to make it more interesting um so if we come into not facilities we want to go into construction and go to beam um let me just check actually i haven't checked the little q a for a while uh stephanie hello welcome in my question is if you do research on sandbox mode does it transfer over to franchise mode uh no it does not if you do research in franchise mode i can't remember if it's an option i think it, i'm pretty sure it's the default there may be an option so that you don't you don't carry research across but in franchise mode research from one zoo can be transferred to all your other zoos in that franchise in sandbox the, the zoo isn't connected to any other zoo so yeah you have to do the research in each one however <laughs> in sandbox let's talk about sandbox settings a little bit because i haven't really talked about that here because i am playing in sandbox here um but the settings are all kind of as if you were in franchise uh we're talking about research aren't we yeah so staff settings you have the option to tick untick this so i've got research enabled because i'm playing as if it's like a new franchise so we're researching through everything if you don't want to research you can untick that and then everything will be researched so that's your building pieces your animals up to like all of their full enrichment and, and knowledge levels everything like that so yeah you can click that there are so many options in sandbox i'd really kind of recommend going through and, and check it, uh, checking these um because you can have things like staff never quit they're fully trained if you're playing with unlimited money if you don't play with unlimited money don't choose that because they're seriously expensive <laughs> um animal settings as well so things like the issue that i have for where some animals don't really like very much foliage in their habitat whatsoever you can come in here if you go down to general not general welfare sorry where is it here we go habitat welfare um you can disable animal plant need so that you can put any type of plant so it doesn't have to be african savanna you know whatever whatever the little things are or tropical tropical african it doesn't have to be that it can be uh, whatever you want and you can put as many plants in as you want full stop so i can show you that if i show you my sandbox zoo later on i can show you that because i don't play with that because <laughs> it's really annoying when some animals only want like five percent plant coverage and it's like like the penguins for example and all you want to do is just put a little bit of plants under the water to make it look nicer <laughs> and they won't allow it <laughs> like, like that sort of thing's really annoying so yeah i turn that off enable animal terrain need as well um means that they don't have the requirements for terrain in the habitat so you can make much smaller habitat habitats and requirements which is kind of useful if you come to do things like hippos or elephants where the habitat size is massive and i'm sure it's probably completely unethical to make them a smaller habitat but again you can choose that option if you want there's cool stuff like enable animal predation and fear um yeah you can kind of like in social groups and things like that so you could make a whole zoo you could make i know there's um uh I think it's NSH Pays, isn't it? Who's done like the wild, where it's basically all animals essentially in one habitat. <laughs> so you can use some of these to um to to get rid of those options. Like animal disabling animal stress is always a good one. Like our skunks get really stressed very often because um they they're shy to humans. So as soon as like the to guess as soon as they like yeah look in the habitat, the skunk gets stressed and it's quite annoying. So yeah, go through all of these uh you can uh, disable death and illness as well so your animals live forever so Ilus could still be here a hundred and whatever years later if we had disabled that but there we go yeah loads of settings in the sandbox definitely come in and have a play with them yeah can you not put eaves on the top um you you could yeah you could uh, they're kind of small i tend to like my tops to be a little bit more overlap than the eve particularly where our wall is on the outside of the grid on the front here to fit the exhibits in um yeah it's uh <laughs> it can be a little bit annoying so but you can yeah you can absolutely you can just position it up there uh magic pie hello welcome in live zoo beauty hello yes live zoo mateo said as well oh my goodness hello hello welcome in great to see you live again for you did not catch one of these in months no uh, there's been very few honestly so you, you haven't missed that many <laughs> that has been not enough live streams for sure um okay so what we're gonna do is add a few edward bix <laughs> oh to mateo amazing oh amazing thank you edward that is insanely generous yet again thank you mateo enjoy the membership um really appreciate you edward thank you and i know you're working as well right now so get back to work 
Um, stressed, stressed skunk, great name for a band. Yeah, that is. I like that. <laughs> that would make a good band, wouldn't it? Um, yeah, please, anyone who's just joined joined the live stream, please do drop any questions you have on Zoom into either the live chat or the Q&A, and I will do my best to answer what I can. Um, so yeah, here we go. I'm going to use these Arctic beams. Again, I didn't show you what I did, so let's... <laughs> this is the beginner's guide. Right, we've got we've got a line to surface option ticked. Um, we're hovering it over the surface of our building here. If we click, it will join it into the group, which can be useful. So let's do that. But it's still on the surface here. So I'm just going to put it anywhere, frankly, but I want it as a sort of window sill here. So I'm going to put it about in this position. And then before I click with my mouse, I'm going to hit X on the keyboard. So this is going to give us the advanced move options. And then I'm going to rotate it here. We've got angle snap selected at 15 degrees, which is again, really useful for making sure everything's in line because you've aligned it to the surface and then you're angle snapping it 90 degrees essentially. So we know it's going to be perfectly in line. Um, and then we're just going to move this into place. So we're going to hover this over the edge of this wall here. I think we will have a little bit of overlap for a bit of interest here as well. So let's maybe come out. So that's a good thing about the wood as well. Let's come out two sections of wood like this and we'll go across and then I've clicked it. So I've got another piece here on exactly the same axis. So I'm just going to slide it right across again, too wide on this side and click tick there. And then what we can do is exit this. So you could carry on and just do them on the other window cells, but we'll exit that. We'll click here, click control on the keyboard to select the other piece as well. And then we're going to click control X or the duplicate and advanced move button up here in the top right. You can't see that, can you? Because my face is in front of it. <laughs> I've just realised that. Right. So behind my face, look, let's, let's, let's turn off the camera. These buttons up here. This one <laughs> is advanced move. That's control X on the keyboard. This one. Well, sorry, advanced move is this one, even, which is X on the keyboard. Um, uh, there we go, advanced move, rotate. And this one is duplicate and advanced move, <laughs> rotate. There you go. Sorry, my face is covering up some vital information. <laughs> Edwards, oh my God, another gifted membership to Magic Pine. Welcome in, welcome in. Oh, and Rightful as well. Oh, wait, hang on a second. Wait, Edward's gifted a membership to Rifle. Thank you so much, Edward, again. You're insane. Thank you very much. I uh, really appreciate Rifle. Enjoy the membership. Imagine Pie has joined YouTube Candies as well. Thank you. Welcome in. Welcome in. Um, you get little sneak peeks, which Imagine Pie you'll, you'll know from Patreon. Actually, on Patreon, you're able to get more of the sneak peeks because YouTube has a limit on how much I can upload. Um, so there we go. But yeah, you get little sneak peeks, you get extra emojis for the chat, your name is highlighted, and you also do get free super chats, I think once a month. So you can have a high, high well, it's a highlighted message in the chat. So um, yeah, don't forget to use those to all the members. Edward's on a mission, he is, oh my God. Yeah, it's massive. <laughs> so you're saying we could have saved I Lost the Prairie Dog after all. We could have done then. Yeah, if we turned off death and aging, we could have saved Ilos. <laughs> yes. <laughs> did Dylos? Uh, uh, did Dylos? Oh god! Did Dylos die of old age? Yes. <laughs> Any membership spare? Oh, Exy, you've had a fair few gifted memberships over the time as well. I think you did your own. I know. Thank you, Magic Pie. I appreciate that. I just saw like Edward's name again, and then saw that. Thank you, Magic Pie. It's so appreciated. I'm never sure what my Patreon thing works, so I'll do it here. <laughs> no worries. Thank you. Thank you so much. Really, really greatly appreciated. Um, right. Yeah, there we go. We've got our window sills in. So control X, shift it over. There we go. So what we're going to do now is we're going to select all of these and we're going to hit control X on the keyboard again. And we're going to raise them up. So we're just going to put them nicely at the top of our window here to give them a bit of a frame in. Uh, so yeah, I think that's, I think that's okay. Yes. And we've done both at the same time. So they're all nicely level with each other, which is quite important as well. Um, so yeah, I quite like that. Now here, I kind of don't super love the join between the stone and the wood. So we could do a little bit of something extra with that. Um, so those were just the Arctic beams there from the Arctic pack. I think we could use a planet zoo beam maybe. I want a square one probably. These are the round, round painted beams. Flat blue beam square. Yeah, so this one is slightly 
less thick than the arctic beam so it could be a good one again we're hovering it over the building clicking x clicking x again to get to the rotate menu and then we'll just rotate it like this now we should definitely sink this back in so it's behind the sort of window sills but that makes quite a nice little border like that um, and just helps to break up some of that sort of oddness you can get between the stone and the wood helps it feel a little bit more consistent um, and this is the kind of part that I've been trying to experiment more. I feel like I was relatively weak on this up until fairly recently. But actually just adding stuff to your, the edges of your buildings like this makes the world of difference. Like just, you know, not just using the wall pieces, but going the extra. Oh, it's because it's sunk into the wall. I was getting really confused though. Um, going the extra little mile to add in tiny little details like this really, really does help, I think, to add some realism and and customization to it as well to make it help not look it to help make it not all look the same <laughs> ultimately um so yeah let's keep bringing this around i'm conscious we do need to add in a door for the keeper as well so we will come to that i think what we'll probably do is just add in a decorative door so it doesn't look like not actually a doorway they can just walk through the wall <laughs> their stuff after all we'll add in a door to make it appear like it's a door at least <laughs> there we go uh oh that's almost to the edge but not quite but there we go that's fine and then so we could actually make this easier on ourselves as well I'll, I'll show you this if i come back to here so we've got one in all the way up this side let's click those three pieces click Control x and then what we can do is with the right uh, the red arrow even here is just drag them down to this end and then again like because we've used control x the whole way around we know everything is in line so it's all like perfectly exactly at the same height and nice and equal here why was that one disappearing then maybe we need to pull this out just a little bit further so it stays in view like that yeah there we go yeah so just that little effect I think helps there. What I'd also like to do is add an awning to the front. Oh, oh no, before I forget these gaps. <laughs> We're not finished. We're not finished here. Um, I think we'll probably add in some more Arctic beams to frame this off. So yeah, again, we've got a line surface on. We've got angle snap on. I'm going to align it to the beam at the bottom. Click X. And we're going to rotate it so they're sort of slightly narrower side. Yeah, it sits on there. And then what we do want to do is sink it a little bit further back than the top and the bottom just to give it again a, a nice effect there um we have to be careful because it does go behind the glass a little bit but it's not too obvious and it definitely fills up that gap which is what we want here <laughs> we don't want that gap in the glass so yeah let's do that and then what we'll do is copy this over to each little window viewing area and you can see the guests are all coming up and viewing the animals have we I, I haven't noticed any warnings pop up to say that they're starving and or dead <laughs> but there we go um this one actually i've realized this panel is slightly further forward isn't it so let's just bring that out so we're getting the same width either side yeah that'll do so it's slightly not perfectly in line but it's not too bad um so yeah that's the window sorted actually one thing before we do do the awning that i'd like to do is add in some education because we've obviously got guests walking around here so let's go to facilities media devices and education let's quickly check uh, questions or live chat and have a little drink as well Why Uh, your channel was banging found it about a week ago while trying to find tutorials for planet zoo and your tutorials are by far the best thank you so much william and welcome into the live stream that's really appreciated and also thank you for becoming a member i think you did a couple of days ago right so thank you really greatly appreciated and i'm glad you enjoy the channel um yeah i'm, I'm, I'm trying to help people <laughs> with planet zoo like it's a super overwhelming game and i don't think the the um in-game tutorials particularly helpful at all and actually when i was looking out there as well before i made the series i couldn't find any like there's all bespoke tu set tutorials one-off videos but there's no kind of build along let's play beginner's guide so that's why i wanted to do this and hopefully share some knowledge and help people out so i'm glad you enjoy them <laughs> i'm always over 
eager to get my animals in a zoo. I have so little patience to take care of my building, but it makes such a difference. I need to plan more. It really does, though, yeah. Like, for me, I get a lot of satisfaction. Like, this is all unfinished. Well, here. But I get a lot of satisfaction from walking around my zoo and just having a little look at things. Um, and enjoying it that way so taking it slow i get a lot more pleasure from even though i totally appreciate where you're coming from it can be frustrating you're like oh i just i, I want to get to the tiger <laughs> like whatever it is like yeah yeah i totally feel you on that <laughs> i'm a fe perfectionist so i could bet your penny or two i'd make everything look gold standard on my zoos nice still in planning phase my current one though is a planning phase is very important <laughs> as we talked about earlier right so i want to get these education boards in now, I want to kind of hide them away in the wall, but the difficulty is I'm pretty sure they're going to, yeah, stick through the glass like this. So I've done this a few times. This is my, this is my first rodeo with these uh, exhibit boards. Yeah, they stick out through the wall, which is really, really annoying. Like, the front of it's slightly at an angle if you're wanting to hide them away, but also make them visible. Of course, we could just literally hide these in the wall and they'd still function. Like I said in the series, totally fine to do that. But I'd actually like the screens out here, um, so I'd like them to be viewable. So... We've got X function up. I'm actually going to click it again to go to rotate and we're going to take off angle snap for this. I'm just going to rotate it forwards just ever so slightly so that the front of it is more kind of vertical to the ground because then we're not digging into the glass at the back here. We can get the screen nicely sitting in the corner like that. Oh, it's still out the front. <laughs> There we go. Is that better? We're not in the glass, are we? No. Okay, we're good. Yeah, so we can get the screen in there and still have the education, but it's visible and we're hiding away the nasty kind of box from it. And for some reason, that is sticking out there. That's a... Is it sticking out the wall? Yeah, it's sticking out the wall. I'll take it back very slightly. We might have had to tilt that a little bit more. It's still not sticking through the glass at the back, so I'm okay with that. So yeah, let's click tick there. Then we've got our little education boards in. Um, so we can come in, obviously, let's select the Titan Beetles there, and we'll go to the Goliath Beetles. Oh god, the raccoons and skunks are mating like crazy. <laughs> I keep having to do some like animal management on them pretty much every time I load up the game. I have to sell some skunks and raccoons because they are, uh, yeah, <laughs> there's loads of them. Water treatment inaccessible. Oh, I haven't joined the path up. Oh my god, so the bison's water is probably dirty by now wonderful um okay let's join this in quickly oh i like my nice straight path there i don't want to ruin my little straight end so i'm gonna actually just make this super ugly this is a temporary fix we'll come back and change that yeah because i've got this snapped into a grid here and so it's a nice square end if i snap this in here we're gonna start getting grass sticking through so i didn't want that so that's <laughs> why i've done that there we go okay let's come back to our little exhibit hut here okay so we've got education in now with um uh because obviously we're paying with money on so we want donations that's really important these can be beautifully hidden in our little walls here so i'm gonna stick one in the middle like that i'll have one at this end which i think will be okay because yeah we, we could stick another one in here as well why not and then let's also while we're at it hide a bin in the wall and again, all of these fully functional, like scenery pieces don't matter to guests or to staff. They essentially ignore them all. <laughs> so that's what it is. Um, oh, oh, a little bit of lag. <laughs> right. Still see having a significant... Uh, oh, yeah. So the... Oh, yeah. But yeah, that, that is the trouble with doing this. I forget that I'm not in sandbox. The guests aren't going to like these. Hopefully, if we add a bit more scenery around this, that um, circle there will reduce. So they won't care as much. In fact, we actually don't need this one, do we? Let's just delete that out. Because then we've only got the transformer there with negative effect. <laughs> so it won't be quite as bad. Uh, we didn't need it, did we? No, because that other... Let me just check. Let me just check. Yeah, the other one's covering it. That's fine. Drama, drama. Yeah, if you're in sandbox mode, again, within the settings in guests, um, you can... Turn this off, enable negative effects of facilities on guest happiness. So that way you can put staff facilities right next to your guests and they're not going to care, which is um, definitely how I like to play. <laughs> Let's get honest. 
Oh, don't forget to like the live stream. Yes, if you're enjoying it, please do drop a like on the live stream. Um, drop a comment after it as well if you're watching the vlog. So yeah, let me know what you think, what you'd like to see as well, topics that you want covered in the series. That's really important to me. I want to do like things that you want to know about um, that are helpful to you. So yeah, let me know. Uh, you're definitely the one that's helped me teach me. Everyone else just has basic controls and advanced build ideas. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. That's, it. Oh, that's, that's the intention of the series. Um, the guides are so brilliant. Carmen saying, fun. I love that your pins are a proper length, but only speed building. Oh, thank you. Thank you much for that. <laughs> Take time to explain things properly. I'm trying. I keep forgetting. I keep doing stuff without explaining it. So if there's anything, um, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Beck, welcome in. Beth, welcome in. Hello, hello. Not a long time no see, Beth, actually. Welcome in. Um, can you manage, manage the exhibits to get cons conservation points? Yes, absolutely. Yes, so that's what we did um, a little while ago, actually. Have we had Titan Beetle babies already? I did send them into the exhibits, didn't I? We have. So this is this is why you want to make sure you've got the management po managed population turned on because they make like wildfire. So yeah, we've got a whole load of them in here. This one, um, because they're not from custom seizure or a pet or anything like that, we can release these to the wild conservation credits. It's only three, it's not many, but the amount of exhibits that you have in, um, you can make quite a decent amount from it. <laughs> yeah, because they have a lot of babies. Um, just put some trees in your building blocking the facilities. Yeah, they majorly have the, they absolutely do, but where we've got the facilities literally in the same building as this, they're too close to the path that the guests don't like it. But I kind of like, I don't care. <laughs> it's only one small area of the park, so hopefully the guests won't leave and we won't lose money because of it. That's, that's the main thing in franchise mode. You can have one or two places like that and it's not really gonna bother them too bad. Uh, thanks so much for your videos. I've been watching them all for a few weeks in preparation for the Xbox launch. Oh, good. Good to hear back. I'm glad you enjoy them. Yeah. Um, yeah, so have you got it on Xbox? Has anyone Is anyone here actually playing on console? I know Shannon said at the start you were. Is there anyone else? Um, the other thing I want to do here is put in a nice... Okay, excuse me. Education screen. Um, a conservation screen even to add a little bit of nice extra something to the wall. So I'm going to place this in and then if we hold it and click X, what I'm going to do is sink this back into the wall. Now we can get this looking quite nice. <laughs> we just raise it up a little bit. What I'm going to do, yeah, I kind of want to sink it back into the wall a little bit, but not too much. I want to make this kind of nice and equal either side now. So I'm click, going to click X again. We haven't got angle snap on, which is what I want. I'm just going to tilt it ever so slightly so that it's sort of more evenly sticking out of the wall. Um, actually that's the top of it there isn't it so that's all right and then what we can do is sink it slightly further back in and we get a little bit of a top and a bottom so we can angle it a tiny bit further sink it back in yeah and then we can just get a nice small border around it like this which I quite like click tick on that we can also color the border on the conservation screens as well so let's um let's have a yellow leaf why not let's have some bright colors yellow and green there we go I will click exit. Oh, you can't even see that, can you? Because it's behind my face. <laughs> um, I only got about 30 minutes of game time on the Xbox. Oh, that's all right. It's only out this week, like a day ago. Yesterday, in fact, wasn't it? So, yeah, you'll build up the time. Um, and then, yeah, let's, well, I don't know what we should have here. Let's have, um, let's have repair of the ozone layer. Why not? Yeah. So there we go, we've got a nice little education board on the wall as well, just to help decorate that up, nice and simple. Um, and then, yeah, let's, actually before I forget, that's what I was going to do, add a door. And then we'll add the awning onto the front as well to help the front of the building sit in a little bit better. So, I'm on facilities, not construction. Let's go to doors. Um, I am thinking probably just a plain, simple metal door, one of the New World ones. Yeah. Oh, flip it upside down. No, let's, yeah, let's just put this in. I think we'll go there. I'm going to hold X actually on it. So we are aligning to the surface here. And I'm just going to sink it back into the wall a little bit. Because I find the doors stick out a little bit too much. Like, obviously, a, a small amount's fine. 
but sometimes they look a little bit ridiculous when they're just stuck on the wall and not sunk back in. So yeah, we'll do that. Okay, awning time. <laughs> and then I do want to do, there was one question that actually came through in comments that I do want to help answer as well. So we'll do that as well. Let me check the questions in the Q&A. How do you even remember all the shortcuts for building? I'm just amazed by watching your videos. I find your channel just looking for videos. Well, thank you, <laughs> thank you, Stephanie. Um, it just comes with time and experience, honestly. Also, the other thing is, I would say, let me hide my face again. Um, if we look at any building piece, so like, let's put this down. I'll press, um, actually, no, that's not a good example. Yeah, let's click on this here. You can see here, the shortcuts are actually in it. I don't know if this is the case on console. But it does say advanced move rotate with the brackets and then x so you can quite often like see from these what the shortcuts are for example like pause i've got it set to space i think it might be zero may may or something different actually by default change speed is zero or uh, actually it's o on your keyboard in fact um if you hover even over these menus i'm pretty sure they all have shortcuts although they don't come up no but yeah, you can you can see a lot of the shortcuts just by hovering over things. So it's kind of a good idea to like go around and have a look at those. Yeah, see, um, uh, you'll you pick it up with time. <laughs> That's what I can say, just like time. Keep building, keep experimenting and you'll get there. And don't worry about always like using your shortcuts to begin with, like pressing the buttons is, is fine. It does the same thing as well. Shortcuts, I never remember them either, yeah. <laughs> it just comes from a lot of time playing. <laughs> it gets stuck in your head. Uh, Splod, is there a walkabout mode where you can walk around your zoo? Yes. Uh, so if you come down to the camera options here, there's explore mode, and then you can drop this in wherever you want and walk around as if you are a person. You can even zoom in a little bit, actually. But yeah, you can walk around as if you're a person. If you hold shift on your keyboard here as well, it speeds it up, which is sometimes nice when you're going around some glam bits. But I'm pretty sure, yeah, look, we can go up and like sit in the seating up here. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, and then just to come out of it, we'll just go back to uh, the standard mode camera. Yeah, so there we go. Right, awning. Morning and welcome in Splod as well. Welcome in. Eric, welcome in. Can you actually see what visitors buy in terms of food and memorabilia? Um, if you click on them, I there's they you can see where they go. In terms of actual stuff, I don't think you can. Um guest information. Oh look, they adopted an animal. Oh, that's so cute. That looks so low. I love that I stopped, so I stopped naming animals <laughs> because they kept dying. <laughs> it was quite depressing. So like, I just thought, yeah. yeah. If anyone has a particular animal they do want named after them, you can let me know here and I'll happily do it. But yeah, it um, gets a little bit depressing. Uh, I would say, you so you can see what they've spent on food, zoo entry, donations, drinks, other. You can't see kind of the individual details of where that is. If you go to a food stall though, you can then see similar information for each stall. So like I can see here, Bernie's Bakes, prices, yeah, finances, here we go. So you can see how much it's making. Lifetime profit, 200 grand, yes, Bernie. Oh, last year, minus six though, that's not so great. <laughs> but yeah, you can see in the last period how much you've earned, unhappy customers, that sort of thing. So you get a little bit of information there. Thank you, Eric. I appreciate uh, that you think my suit is beautiful. Really appreciate that. I'm going to say that these exhibits do work without the keeper. Uh, sorry, without the path connected to them because we haven't had any warnings pop up. Oh, DJ with a 10 US dollar super sticker. Thank you. Thank you, DJ. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for being here for Sue. I know you're into it at the moment. <laughs> really greatly appreciate it thank you for the super super sticker love it um i know animal and conservation points are shared amongst zoos in franchise mode but what about money uh, money is not no so yeah you can't send money from a profitable zoo to a lesser zoo that's one thing you can't do it's only conservation credits and research that's shared yeah i'm 90% I'm, I'm sure on that anyway when you're building a habitat with water glass, which do you plan at first? So do you do the glass, then the pass, or the glass and the terrain? I usually do, or, or guests, if you click on them. Oh, right, that's something else. Um, 
I usually do paths first because water basically won't go in. Um, like if you if you put in if you put in water, then put in your path, and you need to take the water away for whatever reason. If you're doing extra landscape or anything like that, the water sometimes won't go back in. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's a bit it's a bit annoying. I usually do paths first then like a glass barrier if, if it's needed then obviously add the water and then i'll play around with the water in the glass barrier but path usually comes before anything so that i know if i'm taking water away and, and redoing it that it's going to go back in where i want and then also you kind of have to do it alongside each other a little bit as well because if you put in a path and then the water level won't go up to where you want um then you have to play around with barriers and things like that as well so it might be that you want to move the path slightly depending on what you're doing in your habitat but yeah path always path first yeah busy at the food store it's almost like a room so yes uh re guess if you click on them the profile tells you what money they have and what they want yes yeah exactly there's also in in the zoo thing as well um if you come up to zoo overview and guests you can see like what they want so I need more drink and food but frankly i find it very hard to get that up without spamming stuff all over your zoo so yeah yeah um yeah you can see the education and things like that in here as well yeah very useful i love a penguin named after my daughter evie she loves them that is done claire absolutely you can have does she want well let's do a baby we've got thousands of penguins here all right let's do a little baby penguin <laughs> Uh, oh, this is this is a girl as well, Evie. Oh, there you go. We have got Evie, the African penguin. Uh, when she passes on, I will try and remember to do a memorial for Evie. <laughs> well, there we go. <laughs> Let's check her stats as well. Is she, is she a good one? Oh, she's all right. She's all right. She's got high immunity. She's not like yeah. She's not the, not the worst penguin. So there we go. There we go. <laughs> Yeah, we've got Evie the Penguin in. Thank you, Claire. <laughs> Appreciate all your support. Uh, I'm pretty sure that stools exhibits don't need parts completely attached to them. Stools definitely don't. The guests, yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, they go up anyway. Um, the exhibits, they don't. But then I had, so I had a moment of doubt, Madam Pie, earlier in the stream because I was doing this and I haven't connected the part in. And then I was thinking, well, actually, because I play a lot in sandbox mode, do you actually need the parts connected for the keepers to look after them? But you don't. <laughs> so we're fine. We're all good. Unless some of these warnings are that. But no, it's just broken down stuff and raccoons and skunks having babies all over the place. Um... I know animals and conservation points are shared amongst... Di oh, oh, sorry, I've already... Am I scroll I, I'm like, yeah, I've lost in the live chat here. <laughs> um, I'm going to head out now one more day at work, but I'm completely beat. Enjoy the rest of the stream. Looking forward to catching up. Bye, Emma. Yes, yeah. I look forward to seeing your, uh, your crafting as well on the Discord. Um, and yeah, get some good sleep and look forward to Easter holidays. Thank you for popping in um evie is cute yeah it's a nice name i love evie the name yes right let's do our little awning <laughs> i wanted this stream to not be too long and we're already like an hour and 25 minutes in um uh mind you some of my first episode was about that anyway so okay what i want for this awning is i want to use some of the conservation uh pack slats i would say the conservation pack is one of the best packs if you haven't got it like there's so many kind of like good props really in it and building pieces like this like really really love it that and the aquatic pack are fantastic um i want to make sure angle snaps on for this so i'm going to align this to the edge of the building so we have got a line to surface on down here i'm going to click x oh like so the camera's moving all over the place click x again and then we're going to rotate it so that it is uh in fact actually we yeah we're going to have it at an angle we're going to have a ang angled awning i think um, then what I do want is I want it kind of nice and flat on the surface in line with the end. So we're just going to use some of these X functions so that we get it all nicely lined up like that. I do want to bring it up just a little touch, I think, so it's a tiny bit higher. So something more like that will do nicely. Um, I'm not missing a larger one, am I? I am. So yeah, let's use the four metre cladding because that'll just be quicker. Um, I think the colour we can keep it. I'm fine with that. So let's add that. I'll click tick. And then we're just going to very simply 
line this up all the way along and these are beautiful as well because these pieces you'll see the end ones are kind of half the width so you just merge them together and you get a full width one and it's just completely seamless these are some of the best awnings in the game uh yeah lots of different sizes and shapes as well of these so you can build some pretty cool stuff with them for sure um okay so we're gonna do that like that i then want a very small metal bar like uh haven't spelt that right um i'm sure it's called a bar planet zoo. it's a planet zoo was it a european marquee i think it's a european so from the european pack a marquee beam is this it the square one yes this is the one so what i want because these slats are like unconnected it feels really real unrealistic to me so i'm gonna again aligning surface i'm gonna hover over the beams like this we're then going to click x again x again to get to our rotate menu and then because we're on the world axis by the way this makes this really nice and easy so another thing that i said at the beginning of the stream is sometimes it's easier to build away from where you want the building and then move it into place once you've finished uh things like this is definitely the case so sometimes you can align to surface and it's not going to just snap down really nicely onto your building but because we're on the world access so go back to the beginning of the stream if you want to know what i mean <laughs> um that is helping this a lot so yeah what i'm going to do with these is just stick these into the end here just again to add like a tiny bit of extra realism and detail to make them look like they are actually connected up into each other and again this is super simple really because of that world access function um, and the fact that we're using x here as well to align everything perfectly so yeah we can just have that in like that and it's so like unnoticeable i know but it's the tiny little things right <laughs> it's the tiny little things <laughs> Oh, Evie is five and absolutely loves penguins. Oh, lovely Claire. We'll go and take a look at them before the end. And I do need to pop into my other zoos as well, don't I? Oh. <laughs> do we really want to go back to the first one? It's even got a cheesy name. I think it's called, I think it was First Oasis Zoo, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> awful. Absolutely awful. Um, right, I want some nice beams throughout the front. We could just use the Arctic ones because they do go with the window things that we've done. But then we can add some of these in as well i kind of don't really mind where they join like if it's not on the metal bit that's fine i'd prefer it if there's a tiny bit of overlap actually control x on the keyboard or advanced move and this is somehow sticking above that's really interesting is that coming down in a level no it's not how's that sticking above we go up to here I'm very confused if i rotated this well okay <laughs> it is what it is like sometimes these things happen i'm a little bit baffled by it but there we go right we're gonna sink this down like a lot and we'll just keep going along and adding these in i don't know why that end would be higher <laughs> than the others and then this end as well that's like super weird i don't get it right anyway there we go we're fine maybe i rotated the beam very slightly I <laughs> didn't realise. <laughs> I've been looking to start a YouTube channel. Do you have any tips for like editing apps and just general starting tips? Um, so I actually right at the beginning used a free editing software called Shotcut, which like frankly wasn't very good. But there's free ones like DaVinci Code, which is what a lot of people rate. Um, which is it? Da not DaVinci Code. DaVinci Resolve. Um, yeah, which a lot of people rate, which is a, a very good like pretty advanced piece of editing software i would say do your research learn about it it's definitely like probably my biggest tip um in terms of editing but yeah have fun good luck with it and yeah enjoy as it's, it's a whirlwind ride i think my other tip for making a youtube channel is don't try and overdo it to start off with like don't burn yourself out because it's very easy to kind of get overexcited at the start and start cranking out loads of videos and then realize that actually you get burnt out pretty quickly on it like burnout is is real <laughs> and it does happen uh so yeah just take your time with it have fun with it that's what i'd say oh motown madman welcome in hello you're doing well have to run to a point and watch the replay later thanks for all of your work thank you back really appreciate you popping in uh good luck with the appointment um if you can have you ever watched delay designer do her reviews on planet zero and the zoo she created um I've, I've watched a lot of delay designer i actually saw a zoo that she posted yesterday like the zoo tour 
if anyone hasn't seen it, go and watch it. It's like, I think it was like the best mountain zoo or something like that. It is insane. <laughs> like that, like she even says it's like the best thing she's ever seen in Planet Zoo. It is officially the best thing she's like ever. Like it's, it, the, the creativeness, of, uh, creativeness of it is just mind blowing. The way they've used the terrain, like building in accessibility as well as that, like everything is just like crazy good like the detailing inside the restaurant oh my god like all the buildings like are just absolutely mind-blowing so yeah absolutely watch those <laughs> love them what is world axes like how does it take change to just normal okay so um you see the start of your zoo and this edge of the map that is the world axis so that's kind of like x on the world axis and and y if you went to the edge of it over there when you first come into construction any piece that you click on is going to be on the world axes so like if i come into a wall which will make it a little bit more obvious uh oh i've got beam selected so that's what that'll be why um it's all on the world axes as soon as we like press z and change it it's not so i could do that let's do that and then i'll come in and i'll add in a column you see the column is back to the world axes so as soon as i align to the surface here uh like it may or at the top you'll see it's still on the world axes like so it's at an angle so if i then try and use x i mean because we've used angle snap it's not so bad so i know this is snapped to this angle so we can get it perfectly in line but if we hadn't used angle snap it's very hard or near on impossible to get that exactly back to the angle that this same wall is so yeah what you do want to do is if you stick let's exit that um because i've exited that i'm now not on the world axis so let's press escape on the keyboard come back in we're back on the world axis so now anything that i choose is aligned to the world axis so it'll be perfectly in line with this building so you see i'll click this here if we press x to advance move this now those axes are exactly the same as what we're building on the wall um so you can build it like anywhere in your zoo like this on what we call the world axis and then you can just multi select selection and move it to wherever you want to actually put it and then you can rotate it as much as you want and all your build like build pieces are in place that is like the number one most useful tip for building that i've failed to actually say in this series but yeah definitely that the non-world axis if i come into if i come into any piece like here so let's actually just put this on the top here if we click on this now and press x you'll see here you've got toggle from relative to world so this is on well uh no sorry let's let's turn it around first so let's turn it around to there um if we go back to x if we say click this button toggle from relative to world we'll go back to world axis and then we'll be able to move it there relative that's the axis of the actual piece that we've put in so like basically front and back where does that sit that sort of thing hopefully that made sense i feel like i explained that really badly but it's incredibly incredibly useful um yeah like i said for if you're aligning things like you know props or beams to walls in particular like you want it on the world axis <laughs> it's, it's really 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 going to help you particularly if you're a beginner um so just when you come into construction don't worry about where you're going to put it eventually just get your first build pieces and plot them down without rotating them whatsoever and you'll be on the world axis that's the tip hopefully that made sense <laughs> Maybe my terrain. Yeah, I think maybe my terrain is a little uneven here because I've done a lot of terraforming in this area. So that is probably what it is. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to have to head off now. Slowing down. We'll catch up on at some point. No worries, Ben. Thank you for popping in. Enjoy the VOD and enjoy some sleep. DaVinci Resolve. Yeah, no, I got that totally wrong. Egg. <laughs> you watch the mountain sea one. It's so, it is so good. How people do things like that with their whole house houses grinding to a halt let alone their pc he's my pc would burst and die to burst into place i was really surprised actually that when she was looking around that she didn't have any frame issues like it looked completely smooth like yeah i was really surprised at that but there we go um oh look we can't see our little wooden bean pieces here i'm actually just going to move them so they're more in view um yeah that zoo just mad crazy mad yeah i definitely recommend checking out the lady designer's channel with the the video that she put out yesterday which was tuesday the 26th of march i'm pretty pretty sure it was yesterday's video um yeah the best mountain zoo she's ever seen insane 
I could only dream of building like that. <laughs> Here we are building our nice, simple exhibit shelter. <laughs> so what is your, actually your favourite animal in the game? That's a great question, Eric. I don't actually know. I really like the penguins. The African penguins I really, really do like. Um, I, I like the smaller animals generally a lot, I'd say. Um, like the meerkats, the black prairie dogs, the... Um, common wombat's really cute as well really like that uh i do like the um well the snow leopards are gorgeous uh the eurasian lynx is gorgeous as well so some of the big cats i do really enjoy as well it's a very difficult question i like them all <laughs> oh my god w welcome in and Stuart kenny welcome in welcome in both of you and rose as well yes play live planet zoo yes we are live we are live <laughs> The way you explain the world's relative access was actually really good. Okay, good. That's all right. I think the world access and not world access is very under-explained in game. Yeah, in gen yeah, even in the game, it massively is, much of yeah. I don't really hear anyone talking about that. And I have I have massively failed by not talking about it up to this point in our Beginner's Guide series. It should have been in episode one, frankly. Um, but yeah, yeah. It's just one of those things that you sort of forget about when you're recording, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> But there we go there we go um right what are we doing here what are we doing here we are i don't really want this stream to go over two hours so i think like we've got this in we need to do a bit of detailing around it there was one question from a, a viewer which was i think to do with these rock edges here and how we get those in so i'm just going to cover that really quickly let's check there's nothing else in the q and a um no so let's cover that really quickly and then i will go and show you firstly actually no we'll save that no we can't save that for that yeah okay firstly i will show you my first ever zoo which is god awful so that you know that it's possible to get better i don't i'm definitely not the best planet zoo builder whatsoever like i'm, I'm you know go and watch that delayed design video like I'm, I'm not really that good at all but i really like the game and my build style has definitely improved the more i play so this will give you a big insight into that so i'll show you my first ever zoo and then i'll show you like one of the zoos that i started um the other day which i'm pretty proud of the entrance so we can go and see that as well anyway these rock borders um so these are you need the aquatic pack for this and i'm pretty sure it's this little one so rock eight let's just check yes it is <laughs> good i'm not getting mad yeah for this one so if we click this on the ground if we press x on our keyboard again to get into advanced move and again to get into the rotate we're then just going to rotate it vertically upwards like this and then we're going to press x again and we're just going to sink it into the ground and then of course you can recolor these so that they're gray so we just do it like this press tick then what i do is move it on a little bit i'm actually going to turn off angle snap for this if we hit x again we're going to rotate and i'm just going to like spin it round a bit and then i'm going to use this multi-axis function to just kind of eyeball it into a line because this is helps to make it look a little bit rougher so again like right, we'll just rotate it a bit move it in line you could even sink it down just a tiny bit more so it looks like a different size press tick there move it again let's lift it back up let's press x again rotate a little bit more um and so on and so forth so you've got like a kind of straight line of rocks like this and then if you hold click on one hold control on your keyboard you can select all of them uh, then you can select control x on your keyboard or duplicate an advanced move and then we can just start to like place these along the edge of our path like this once you've kind of made a setup of a few different rocks which are different so yeah that is how we do that rock border hopefully that's the rock border that was in question um i think that was vegas sim, sim that asked that so yeah <laughs> if there's any others uh, you can let me know how do you tour other people's zoos so you can upload your zoos to the steam workshop so you can download other people's zoos from the steam workshop if you're playing on steam at least um uh oh you asked about the rocket it was it was you oh there we go there we go yeah there's the rock edges <laughs> um there was a, there's a bigger question about how to transition to other areas which i'll probably cover in a video um and there's a few other questions uh, we haven't covered tonight but i'll definitely do more zoom streams if you're keen for it definitely please do drop a like on the video and comment to let me know that you want to see more um that's kind of the biggest indicator for me um first zoo very oh it's not exciting imagine pie this is going to be like a cringe and die moment honestly <laughs> 
I'm in the middle of building the train station. I decided to have the track elevated to go over the path, which of course means I'm making it more complicated than necessary. Seems I always do that. Yeah, it's um uh you have to build all the steps and all the rest of it to to it, won't you, Michael? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think having an elevated um train though is pretty cool. I like that. I really like the monorail elevated also. Well, I think it kind of needs to be elevated really, doesn't it? But yeah, awesome. Um okay, right. I think I think in the interest of time we're gonna leave it there. I was hoping to get onto a little bit more detailing around it, but we can come back to these little areas. But hopefully that's kind of given you some live building <laughs> ideas there at least. So um let's say this. Uh, I'm going to call this episode 14 because I've kind of talked through everything and hopefully there's enough content in this for people to learn from. It's like a refresher on building, let's say, uh, this episode and answering, of course, your questions. And if there are more, do keep them coming in the Q&A or in the live chat. I love Planet Z, but I do not wish that we had Anarchy mod like we do in CS1. There's, there's kind of Anarchy built in, though. Like, I know, oh, you mean with, like, the paths? Oh, yeah, definitely with the paths. Oh, my God, yeah. Yeah, I totally, <laughs> yeah, I totally agree with that. The paths are an absolute nightmare sometimes. Once you get used to them, they're not too bad. But, okay, we've definitely saved that, haven't we? Yeah, uh, this is what I do every time. Save it about three times. It's kind of like an OCD thing, <laughs> just in case. <laughs> so the rocks are the aquatic rock number eight in different rotations and sunk into the ground. Yes, so you want the the pointy end of it is the one that i use but you can experiment with different rocks um to do the same thing but yeah the pointy end pointy end of aquatic rock aquatic faux rock number eight yeah so on its side rotate it vertically for the pointy end sticking up and then sink it in yeah that's what i do terry tags hello you made it right at the end hello hello and bye we're not we, I, i'm like, we're carrying on a little bit <laughs> If people want to see this, I'm actually like gonna die. I'm actually gonna die. This one, this wasn't even that long ago. Like 2020, this was okay. You say three times two, that'll do. Actually, okay, good. I'm glad it's not just me. <laughs> um, I appreciate you sharing your knowledge with all of us and helping us learn more about designing. No worries, Motown Madman. Motown Madman, I can't speak. Uh, that's what that's what I'm here to do. That's what this. Beginner's Guide to Planet Zoo series is all about. So I want to answer your questions. I want to. Oh my goodness! Oh, we're not in. <laughs> we're not in. Wait, is this? This isn't it. Is this it? This isn't the zoo I remember. This isn't it. I got a second. <laughs> what did I just load into? Um. Oh, that's the challenge. Hang on a second. Right. Oh my god! If I deleted it. I'm sure it was that one uh right let's uh let me just quit to make <laughs> main menu. i have no idea what this is don't look at this <laughs> or, or whatever it is i'm sure it was that too i even opened it earlier just to check it was still there <laughs> oh edward Bick oh riley works so welcome it. edward bickford i just want to wish everyone here a happy easter thank you edward that's so nice that's so nice um, happy yeah. Easter to you too and to everyone here as well. Yeah, great, great point. Yes. I think I may do a live stream at the weekend, you know. I'm in a live streaming kind of mood, so yeah, probably a, it'll be a cities one. Yeah. I'm sure it's gonna look really nice. It really doesn't. <laughs> I'm very confused now as to what zoo is the one I was actually going to show you. Wait, that's oh. is that the challenge zoo, isn't it? I think this is the one. Let's just open it in the sandbox and then we can change the weather. Um, I think this is the one. <laughs> oh my god, I meant to say Edward Bickford. Thank you so much for 19 months as well. That's insane. And DJ, thank you for 20 months. I'm so proudly, holy moly, y'all. Love you guys. Thank you so much. You like really appreciate the crazy sport. Riley, yes, welcome in. Dang, you missed most of the stream. You did, but it's okay. You're gonna have um a look at where i start this whole planet zoo there is hope to everyone that's all i say like it, i think the biggest thing with planet zoo is like if you like it's to there's different ways to play it isn't it it's like cities there's totally different ways to play it you don't have to do um intricate detailing stuff you can use the default barriers you can use blueprints which you're going to see all over this zoo <laughs> um uh 
yeah and that's fine you can play it like however you want you don't have to get into the detailing if you want to get into the detailing taking it slow and be having patience is like the best thing so yeah here we go this is literally my first ever zoo <laughs> um yeah there wasn't a challenge <laughs> so there we go blueprints all over the place you can see here look it's it's habitat borders i'm not using null barriers at this stage don't even know what they are don't care <laughs> um all i can say is pine all oh, right franklin pine sylvania actually started out quite nice and then the airport ruined it <laughs> it was all right to begin with <laughs> um but yeah here you go <laughs> this is it first oasis so lots of blueprints um an absolute crap load of people like it's a popular zoo i mean look at this like yeah this is where i started like not that long ago like i said like i think this said it was saved in 2020 or something like that so yeah <laughs> like, you can do it this is kind of cute actually my first go at underwater viewing i don't know what oh, oh that is a yeah water. i mean you look underneath though and there's i mean it could be worse but there's pretty much nothing there but this is cute i did a dome i'm pretty sure i watched a youtube tutorial for that placed it over my barrier in here looks all right looks all right <laughs> so there we go we've got crocodiles and we've got a little african blueprinted village like everything was blueprints here like yeah a little <laughs> the giraffe zoom, zoom kind of like over hang thing this is so bad like honestly it's so bad you have to wipe this from your mind and uh I unfortunately can't delete it from the live stream, but there we go. Well, look, we got anteaters, and I think it was capuchins in here, wasn't it? It's was a little walkthrough. Go over the moat as well. It's kind of cute. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's all right. Oh, we got the grizzly cave. Oh, I do remember this actually. This was kind of cool. This is where they come to sleep, the grizzly bears, and then you come out, and then they're just surrounded by brick wall. Well, there is like raised viewing areas, and things like that around here. Like, there's some alright elements, isn't there? <laughs> and then we got the big Arctic area. Oh yeah, we did. We 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 liked the cave idea, so we did it with the snow leopards as well. Here, kind of cute. Yeah, we tried to sink. So this is quite a cute bridge, actually. That's actually better than Mudbar Wonsons Bridge. <laughs> uh, your first suit is great, you see. <laughs> oh no. Um, is the quality all right? Are we lagging a bit here? Yeah. I'm worried that there's so many people in this this zoo. Um, yeah, there we go. <laughs> I mean, it, it is what it is. There's some elements of, like, cuteness to this. The pond's quite nice. Little baby tigers. Yeah, I do love the tigers. I do love the... I think these are Spi Siberian tigers, aren't they? Very cute. Oh, the baby ones, yes. Love those. Love those. But it's all blueprints everywhere. I mean, what is this? <laughs> like, like, what is this barrier up here? Like, what was I actually thinking? I'm not sure. <laughs> but yeah, like, this is where we, I'm sure this is where like everyone starts. Like, default barriers, blueprints. That's absolutely fine. Like, yeah, go for it, go for it. I'm trying. I'm trying to remember now if there's anything like actually decent in this zoo. Um, this uh, this was quite a cute little capuchin um, indoor bit. I like I made this sort of like bunk beds <laughs> at the end here and then this climbing frame. I do remember this. Yeah. No extras on the building of course back then. But there we go. I love using blueprints for the workshop and adapting them as needed. Saves a ton of time. Yes. Can we rename Oasis friend? <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, we can't, no, see. Um, saving blueprints is absolutely fine. Like, I still use some of the scenery blueprints every now and then, because, like, that's okay. You need to do that occasionally. Um, it's not bad at all. Okay, that's all right, then. <laughs> um, looks like you weren't as fluent in the game yet, but already showing the good ideas. Yeah, there's some... I, I don't know what this board is here, actually. That's a little bit random, isn't it? But there we go. Um... You just saw a goodbye sign. Can you create exits? Uh, no, no, they still go out the same way. That was just me trying to create a nice little entrance here. Won wonky signage. <laughs> um, yeah, oh, this was cute, actually. This is all blueprints. Yeah, go back to Michael's point. You can absolutely do some cool stuff with blueprints. Don't be afraid to use them. Like, I think just add your own details around them. And actually, one thing, actually, I'll, I'll take you to the zoo. Um, that I've just started in a second. 
Um, I've used a blueprint in there and basically deleted all the wall pieces. But it's a great way of doing it. So you can change the buildings and the blueprints and it's just a good solid like start point, isn't it? Not everything was amazing. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, impressed with the dive. Thank you, Michael. When you're getting your bearings, the blueprints are really good. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, the blueprints are handy. Yeah, so this was a little staff area. I thought, which was quite cute, losing all the, using all the blueprints to the sort of central bit. <laughs> she looks a little bit odd. Lots of the same. I really like this plant, whatever this is. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I think that's enough time in a first oasis zoo. <laughs> friend would say if that's what you want to call it XA. <laughs> um right let's go and uh what we're doing that sandbox i think no let's go and load uh in pursuit auto oh my god why right, oh. <laughs> let's go and load this one The staff area looks really good. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't too bad. Like, yeah, it's kind of. I think. I think I wanted to be really creative with it, and just like wasn't quite getting it. But I think that's it. I'm definitely progressing there. But yeah, the blueprints is absolutely no problem using them. Um, yeah. So this is a zoo that I just started really recently. There's not much to it right now, but I've just spent about a lot, a lot of time doing this entrance way. And I absolutely love this. This is all sandbox, by the way. Um, yeah, so I've actually used this. I've got rid of the entrance. I've used the spawners being the coaches. This is all unfinished around here. Um, but you get the kind of general gist of it, hopefully. But yeah, this was based on Akron Zoo, um, which I know a couple of other people have actually done in Planet Zoo already. So it might be a familiar building um, to you. Oh, Egg feels attacked. I'm sorry, Egg. I'll take that back. It's not great. <laughs> I like Cromwood. I have no problem with it. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is the front of it, which I quite like. Yeah, I'm really pleased with this. We've got a staff area actually sunk slightly down, but I was really trying to like play with different terrain heights in this zoo was the main thing that I wanted. I want this to be like a mountainous zoo. Um, yeah, so that was the kind of general idea for it. Some cute little planter ideas. Uh, the path as well, like, so the path actually, like if I come out of here, this is a clever thing you can do with, yeah, see the path sticks out into these flower beds um all the way around and then i've just used some actual flooring pieces with this edge to create a curve to the path but it, the path is nothing like that it's on a square grid um how do you put entrance as bus uh so in facilities in guest facilities zoo entrance you got a bus oh i think you need the european pack for this uh yeah i think you need the european pack for this the monkeys are on the loose are were they <laughs> is that right I guess. um yeah you can plot these in so where you've got your usual entrance it will have these guest spawners in it these automatic automatically have your guest spawner in it so you can plot those in and connect them up um you do then want to put in the zoo entrance barriers which are these as well so that your guests actually pay to get into your zoo yeah there's also a boat zoo entrance as well which is really really cool <laughs> yeah so you can arrive at a lakeside and arrive at your zoo yeah, so that's how you do it. So I've got the like spawners there and then they come in and they've got little tickets, information booths. Oh god, I'm on a really weird camera here. Hang on a sec. Let's go to free look. Yeah, that's better. Um yeah, they've got the ticket ticket booths either side, um, which just information stands, and then here are the gates, which so kind of like hidden in it. But yeah, really, really love this building. Yeah, based on a real life building from Akron Zoo. I just found some inspiration. I know other couple of other people have sort of done various different things with it um in planet zoo but yeah it's kind of cute this is all very much unfinished i've only just started this <laughs> um but yeah this is the blue printed gift shop and i've just changed all of the walls on it um yeah so simple as that i think in fact like i can show you that if we go to guest facilities um uh is it a gift shop What's it, what's it actually called? <laughs> losing my mind, losing my mind. Here it is, souvenir shop, that's the one. Yeah, so that's this building. And all I've done is deleted the wall and the roof pieces and put in my own because I, I didn't want to have to make a gift shop, honestly. <laughs> so yeah, don't be afraid to use blueprints and you can kind of customize them as well, um, which is quite a nice idea there. Yeah, we've got a little education centre up here, which is unfinished again, but this was my idea as where you'd bring the school kids. So I'd sit around here with a talk and I was going to do a billboard for it at some point. 
little vending machines, some conservation signs and some seats to eat their lunch. Oh, hello. Oh, my goodness. That's that coming from. Lots of rubbish everywhere. <laughs> um, and then this was actually my kind of practice <laughs> for what we just did today. I haven't even put a roof on it. But yeah, I was trying to get ideas for little exhibit areas. So there we go. We just got some planters outside the front of it. Oh, this is cute. Actually, I've got to show you this. Toilets come inside. Oh, and there's little doors to each of the toilets in here. So the toilets are like hidden away behind the doors. It's very cool. I like that. <laughs> You can definitely, definitely see my improvement stuff, thank you for that mean. Um, and then yeah, a little sunken staff area over here, uh, which is quite nice. Um, just use a little rope thing to block it off. Uh, this is all obviously massively unfinished. And then we're going into a beaver habitat here, which again is unfinished. So <laughs> there we go. Um, I think because, because this one's unfinished, I'm very proud of the entrance area, which is still unfinished on the outskirts, but that's like... Um, pretty good yeah i think what i will do is just very quickly before we end the stream you can go and see my other zoo which is slightly more progressive <laughs> shall we say um which i have been working on fairly recently as well botanical garden vibes yes yeah 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 that's exactly what i wanted eric yeah it's gonna ask where you get your inspirations from and if playing cs and planet zoo has made you a structure you a structure nerd in terms of how buildings work and how they look it has a little bit imagine by yeah i would say more planet zoo than city skylines because the buildings in cities are obviously kind of already made um so yeah less of the structural stuff but planet zoo i i have a look at different architectures and buildings and try and get ideas from that for sure yeah like exactly like that entrance like if you find an entrance that you like it's very possible you can recreate it in planet zoo because there's so many different build pieces and the flexibility of the building options is just amazing um because obviously there's loads of build pieces if you have the dlc's mainly um so yeah that's a yeah uh, in fact talking about that this building right here this reptile house is based on the reptile house in city skylines um so like the middle of it's totally different but the outside is what i've based on that <laughs> so um yeah <laughs> have a look at that is that spelled akron zoo it's spelled a-k-r-o-n you can go and have a look yeah it's just the entrance is amazing the zoo itself is quite small but the entrance building is spectacular yeah are you going to be posting this too? I'd love to watch it. I could even just be speedfield vids if you prefer. Um, I mean, so I, I did, I started, because I literally started that like a few days ago, the Imbazoo, the last one. Um, I kind of, as I started it, I thought I should make it into content, but I've got so many series ongoing at the moment. It's too much for me to like do regular episodes on everything. So I was kind of reluctant to start another series. Um, what I would be more inclined to do is do like, a stream series of it um because obviously i then don't have the editing time afterwards which is mainly the issue <laughs> when you have so many series on the go rather than the game time um so it's very possible you can do that if you guys are keen to see it then we could definitely do that if you if you really do just want to see speed builds like with no voiceover and music then that's possible i can do that and i could probably see how they go but that's a very different kind of um format of video to what i've done previously but if people are keen to see that I can just record as I play, that's fine. <laughs> Have you played The Sims 3 or 4? Oh yes, Riley, yeah. I played uh, both of them extensively. <laughs> yeah, extensively. Um, so yeah, this is based on the City Skylines reptile house. Um, not inside, but this is kind of cool. Yeah, I've got the Asian water monsters over here, a little exhibit in the corner. Um, oh god, it's difficult to like show you around. <laughs> Come down here, we've got some caiman dwarf caiman um over this side really like the sort of underwater bits in here actually they're they're quite nicely detailed again this is sandbox so they they've got way too many plants versus what they actually like in here um but it looks kind of cool oh that was close um yeah really really like this building i'm gonna hit pause as well just to help the frame rates this then comes up into a little restaurant in here in the greenhouse Again, all of this is unfinished. Uh, but yeah, sorry, I'll go back and start at the entrance. But yeah, that building is based on the one in City Skyline. So I've just, again, I've just looked at the architecture and tried to recreate it, which is what I do quite a lot. Um, I can tell my frames are dying on this. <laughs> you can see the outside is from CS1. Very cool. Thank you, Claire. Good. I'm glad it's like noticeable. <laughs> also, proper question. Where do you get your terrain inspirations from? I'm awful, awful at land inspiration, really terrible. I think that's probably one of my biggest challenges. That's why I started in Bazoo, um, to try and like stretch myself a little bit, honestly, and do different terrain heights, because it's so easy to just build on the flat, like eggs question at the start. Um, 
so uh, it's difficult <laughs> in terms of inspiration i think that probably it's probably less inspiration and more from my mind but i think when you build a habitat if you want something kind of going around the side or peeking around the side and looking at it why not carry that path on and then that could lead up a hillside so you could put in a hillside there but i definitely i shape the terrain as i go not work around already shaped terrain because i think that's so much easier so you can put in a habitat if you shape the terrain around it then you can kind of extend out on from there and then take your path up and around that terrain and kind of keep building it out from there that's what i'd say Edward, the workday is over. Yay! Rubber ducky. Yes, rubber ducky. The duck. Yeah, they're always... I love the ducks. Like, I know the um, uh, enriched items are pretty cheesy, but the duck is very cute. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't mind either speed build or live stream. Both would be very nice either way, but we'd definitely love to see the zoo's process. Okay, okay. Thank you. Midnight moods. I can definitely... Um, I, I can consider it. I won't promise anything on the stream. Yeah. Oh, thanks for hanging out for the Eggs on Toast episode. Always good to hear from you. Oh, thank you, Michael. Yeah, that was fun. That was fun. Thanks to Egg for having me on his uh, podcast. Yeah, that was a that was good fun. That I enjoy that. My frames are massively dying here. I think it may be tied to <laughs> the stream. Yeah, this is cute. I like this entrance way. Anyway, we go into a little staff area in here, um, which is quite nice. They actually have a really nice area of view out over the crane habitat out here. Um, this is all quite basic. I kind of rush through a lot of the start of this, I'd say, but there are elements of it that are quite nice. But I can see my frames dying, which must be coming across at the stream. <laughs> Definitely think terrain is best to work up through enclosures, building up, create some hilly environments and work the paths around it. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Um, this is another kind of flat zoo, honestly. <laughs> That's why I started the Ember one, because I was like, I just want to play with terrain. We've got some moose here. We've got some moose here. These are cute. I like this. Common one bats, which is one of my favourite animals. They're very cute. Very, very, very cute. <laughs> um, they've got a nice little habitat with the train running by. This is one of the habitats that I showed in the transport video. And then they've got this little, like, indoor area you can see here I really like the little heat lamp actually that i did on that <laughs> it's kind of cute the red light bulb um oh the frame rate's awful my pc is dying how did the cranes not just step over the rocks apparently they don't yeah <laughs> i don't know <laughs> I love the stream, says Rose. Okay, good. All right. We'll definitely do more Planet Zoo live streams. I need to do more live streaming in general, and it just keeps not happening because this year has been crazy so far. But that needs to... Life needs to go away, and we need to have more streams. <laughs> um, we've got some bears here. Um, again, this is talk talking about terrain, actually. Like, this path, I could have very easily carried it on up the hill, but we've got this sneaky little back path to come up here and look at them in their cave enclosure um, from this side. What view are we are? We are on free look. Um, oh, yeah, it's all oh god, going through the trees. Yeah, it's all kind of cute. Like the little staff door here is hidden away as well, which I quite like. Um, I don't know how much of this zoo to show off, really. This is this is like this is it. Oh, I will show actually. I will. I know we wanted to. Um, Claire's daughter Evie loves penguins, so we have got penguin pond over here, which is quite nice. <laughs> Um, yeah, I know. I've been streaming for much longer than I actually think. <laughs> also, zoos seem, seem quite compact. Is it a game thing or a preference? It's, it's more of a preference thing. It's not, it's not a game thing. Um, I'd say if you're playing on franchise mode, it does become a game thing because the larger your habitat is, the more land tax you have to pay. Um, but if you're in sandbox, that doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, it is more of a preference thing. I think sometimes it's... With the constraint on the number of animals and habitats it's sometimes actually difficult to make super large habitats um or spread the zoo out over more area so yeah that it it could be a preference and sort of a game thing i suppose but definitely more of a preference thing you know we've got a little climbing frame here this is on the workshop if anyone wants <laughs> my little climbing frame with a slide and a climbing wall oh my frames are awful yeah we may have to call it there but yeah we've got penguin pond here anyway with an underwater viewing and we've got a whole load of penguins <laughs> um so we might just leave <laughs> leave it there that's a little taste of what i've been up to anyway i've ended up showing you two of my recent zoos rather than just one so there we go um let's just check that there's no more questions in the q and a 
Um... Uh, no, I apologise if I have missed anyone's question, but I think that's it. Um, I think your builds are amazing here in CS1 and CS2. Thank you. <laughs> you showed her and she loves it. Oh, good. Good. Glad to hear. Franchise, you have to pack things in to get the money. Yeah, at, at least it's not exactly. Yeah, but on Sandbox, it's kind of you, you're free to do whatever you want. There's some great, um, like ZSH plays has created wild habitats, which are really awesome. Yeah. When is the next City Skylines video coming? Uh, either tomorrow or Friday. It's already recorded. It just needs the edit finish. So, yeah. Um, these ones are very cute. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me for the first Planet Zoo live stream. I hope it's been kind of useful to um, some of you, at least, and uh, fun at the same time. Let me know in the comments um, once the live stream finishes. You can refresh the browser and um, you should be able to leave a comment. Or if you're watching it back, let me know in the comments what else you would like to see in the series. Like, I definitely want to take questions or topics that you guys would like to see. Or what. Also, let me know what other planet zoo content you'd like if you do want to see speed builds or more streams or whatever it is um i'd love to do more i i cannot get enough of this game this is the game that i'm playing in my downtime at the moment because i'm just like super obsessed right now so <laughs> yeah yeah can't wait for new videos from you we'd love to see layout and choosing animal tips in the next beginners app um yeah we can do that we can do layout and choosing animals that's a good question yeah um let me note that down <laughs> um in my little notepad that sat next to me uh yeah there we go um thank you so much yeah please do drop a like uh if you enjoyed it and um yeah appreciate you guys all being here big shout out to my patrons as always you guys rock um so appreciate your support like it's, it's greatly 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 appreciated and to all the gifted memberships <laughs> super chat tonight thank you so much um yeah we'll leave it there so like yeah thank you all claire eric um egg karina eggsy emma who was here earlier as well modding imagine pie mate madman michael midnight moons um rose riley katie thank you all so much have a wonderful wonderful rest of your day and i will catch you on a live stream very soon bye bye